how long were the jet ski guys down there waiting for them? <laughs> <laughs> like they they were holding them they're down like, there. They're like, they no, just, they're they're go- they're coming any minute now. They I just have, you. they just have straws. <laughs> they <laughs> did. They seriously did. They had this weird little thing they coming did, out of their mouth they? that was up onto the top Are of the water. Serious? They're yes. literally doing like like cartoon <laughs> Looney Tune style. Uh, Bill, hiding. Steve, Tom, we're gonna need you guys to take the next four hour session. You go down there. You're down there for four hours. <laughs> if they come, you'll hear the noise. If they don't, we'll do the other noise. That means come up. We're gonna switch your shift with Travis, Travis, and Travis. Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Yes, sir. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names in the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you. Mm. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch. But there was something truly special about going to Blockbuster, picking out a movie by hand, and trying to trade for it with a jar of dirt as currency. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me, as always, two dudes who love jet skis. Mm. Sean Pryor and AJ Vince, how the heck are you? I remember taking a specific class to uh, even ride a jet ski, to even like be jet ski certified. Yeah. And I learned... Nothing other than when you are like when you fly off it at like high velocity, <laughs> you have to get on on the back in order to get back on because you don't want to tip it. You know. What I mean? Okay, well, that's, so that's good advice. That's I'd say that's advice. the second most important advice about jet skis. The number one being that when you are not giving it throttle, it does not steer. It doesn't. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's number one. I forgot about that one, but yeah. I think the new ones do that now, so it's like who cares? Yeah, they're always going. <laughs> These old ones in Waterworld? No, 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 way, no. no. <laughs> These are like Wave Wave sixty four, or whatever it is. Wave <laughs> Runner sixty four. I can't remember. What it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Running off of pure tobacco. The Absolutely. <laughs> well, boys, on today's episode, we discuss the most expensive movie ever made at the time of its release. A movie that was filmed almost entirely on water, causing production to be shut down three times due to hurricanes we'll and get frequent there. drowning scares. A movie directly responsible for the downfall of Kevin Costner's career, which eventually he learned how to sniff when he talked, and that brought his career back, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> Mad Max, but on the water. We are, of course, talking about 1995's Water World. Well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the confused breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. That don't beat fight. Gets in your bones. It does, man. If gonna, you are new, to, fight everyone. <laughs> if you are new to this podcast, we're going to be reviewing Waterworld scene by scene with a modern eye. But in order to do that properly, <laughs> we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. AJ, tell us the first time you saw this movie, what your thoughts were, and what your rating is was. Best movie I ever saw as a kid. You Not, love this. No way. I was so stoked no on this movie. Way. My brother Bob and I would watch this movie all the time. We had it on VHS. What's the matter with you? Um, I'm telling you, we loved this movie. Because my brother Bob loved the water. He loved being in the water. He loved sharks. He loved, like, when we were kids and stuff, you know, like, every, you, you, when you guys would go on vacation, he'd buy a shark tooth necklace. Correct. Yeah, okay. Like, that, that kind of or, on yeah. It. or it was like the tie dye shirt that probably had sharks on it, and I bought the one that got, had the wolf on it. So that's what we were doing, right? And so that's what we did. Like, I got, the, I wanted the red one, and it has a wolf. I just, want a shark, but on land. I just, want a blue shark. Just the Venz clan clearing just. all, like, land, sea, oh, air. Yeah. Doing everything. Your oh, other we, brother was into eagles, I think. Yep. We got predators just everywhere. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> great start. No, we love that. We love this movie. We absolutely had it on VHS. Um, and we, but we probably first saw it, like I first saw it. He saw. Dude, Water World's, Dude. On, World's on TNT, <laughs> and we have to watch it. And so he made me sit down, and we'd just be watching this on TNT, and then we finally watched it. I, uh, on full full movie on VHS, well, almost full movie, two fifteen. There you go. Uh, 
movie. This is guys. Uh, this is this is a nine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 9.8. Oh, 9.8 nostalgic. oh, nostalgically. Yeah. Sean, what about you, man? Maybe a little uh, different? Uh yeah, a little different. I wasn't that I wasn't that big a fan of it, I would say, but like every wasn't a time shark kid. Yeah, I was yeah, I, was, yeah. <laughs> I liked Jaws. Uh, um every time it was on TV, I watched it. That's for damn sure. That is true. Um and that's honestly only where I've ever seen this movie. And I think well, I'll I'll get to that at the end, but um Back then, I just have to say, every time it was on TV, I'm like, oh, cool, Waterworld. So I'm going to give it a uh, 7.5. 7.5. I don't know. I don't know if I actually ever sat down and watched it from start to finish, yeah. but I know I've seen the entire movie. <laughs> yeah. There was not one scene in this rewatch where I'm like, huh? No. So I, I was like, <laughs> I've just seen it. I've seen it all on television just at different points. And it never, ever, I would always go, ooh, I've heard this. I've heard about this movie. And then 20 minutes in, I'd just be like, mm, yeah. But like, Nickelodeon Guts is on, you <laughs> yeah, know, like right. it, it never, <laughs> right. ever got me. It never, ever caught me that hard. So I'm going to give it more of a five nostalgically. We got executive producer Josh Miller. This was his choice right. as by right. Let's go. He chose this movie. He said, good old Waterworld. Thinking back on this movie, all I remember is the hate it got. It's so awful. Not worth watching. It was going to be the end of Kevin and Kevin Costner's career. To be honest, I don't recall when I originally saw this. I know it wasn't in theaters. I didn't start seeing most of the movies in theaters until 96 or 97. If I were to probably take a guess, it's probably 97 or later. It was probably after I saw The Postman, which I did see in the theaters. <laughs> yeah. This also was supposed to derail Costner's career. Frankly, The Postman, while not an amazing movie, not near as bad as everyone made it out to be either i'll never tell anyone that hasn't seen Waterworld or the postman they are a must watch but if you have the time go for it i'm kind of surprised that i didn't see Waterworld any sooner at the time i did and i still love jet skiing to this day there have been so <laughs> this asked this had so many shitty jet skis in it they sourced all the shitty polaris sls and yamaha <laughs> wave runner threes they could daniel tosh said it best they say money can't buy happiness but it can buy jet skis <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever seen someone not happy on a jet ski <laughs> when i did finally watch it i think i enjoyed it not to the extent of madly rewinding that vhs and starting over i don't remember much except drinking your own pee slapping kids on the back of the head for being dumb and clearly the mariner's gills nostalgically i give this a big fat 5.52 so guys nostalgically Damn. we wow. are a six point nine six nostalgically which whew, sorry well, i tried <laughs> I, you know it's not bad it's probably middle of the pack for most things it is slightly lower than predator we thought predator was slightly better and we thought ghostbusters was slightly worse is what wow. we thought about this movie nostalgically damn what okay. the hell well, lucky for us, we don't give a fuck about the nostalgic rating because no, this will be the last time we ever talk about it. We are going to move on and talk about this with a modern eye. So first, we got to learn all the pertinent, important details of the movie. Sean, I know there's a fuck ton. Let's do this. Produced by John Davis, Charles Gordon, Lawrence Gordon, and Kevin Costner. Written by Peter Rader and David Twy. Twy. Is this his second time? Yes, Twy. Twy. he's here Twy. again. <laughs> Cinematography by Dean Semler. He also did The Road Warrior. Uh, Dances with Wolves, Last Action Hero, Triple X, or something. Let me, let me do that again. The Road Warrior, Dances uh. with Wolves, Last Action Hero, Triple X, and Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's better. Uh, and, co and Cocktail. Okay. He's uh, no. part of that, too. Okay. He, he, did, he did that to us. He did it. Edited by Peter Boyle. Music by James Newton <laughs> Howard. Uh, it was actually Mark Isham was originally hired to do the score for this, but... Uh, uh, he said that he didn't like the themes of the movie. He said the themes were too, quote unquote, ethnic for him. Okay. Mm Pan flutes and kind mm -hmm. of maybe like Gregorian singing. He just was like, I'm, I'm not into that. I'm like, not doing this. Whatever, it's too man. ethnic for me. So James Newton Howard came on board, and I think the score's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. Uh, directed by Kevin Reynolds. Cast is Kevin Costner, Gene Triplehorn, Robert Joy, Kim Coates, Gerard Murphy, Tina Majorino. Michael Jeter, R.D. Call, and Dennis Hopper. Writer Peter Rader, writer Peter Rader, first came <laughs> up with the general con conceit of the story when he just said straight up, I want to do a ripoff of Mad Max. <laughs> On top of being heavily inspired by Mad Max, Rader was also inspired by Old Testament stories, specifically the story of Helen of Troy. The original script was completed in 1986, but was shelved in 1989. Famed B-movie god Roger Corman was originally interested in the film. 
uh, did movies like Death Race 2000, all like a bunch of great just B movies. Uh, Corman is like a a, a shepherd of um, like the filmmakers we know and love today. Like they all came from the Corman school, pretty much. Like a lot of great directors did, um, and he's just a, a great pioneer in um, filmmaking in general. Love him. Co-writer David Twahey did several rewrites along with Peter Rader. Grabbing the attention of filmmaking team Kevin Reynolds and Kevin Costner, the Kevins. Mm. The pair had already done three other projects lost together. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin lost at sea. Kevin, Kevin lost at sea. You know what we haven't done? <laughs> Gone to New York. Gone to New York. Uh, the pair had already done three other projects together in the past, including Rapa Nui, Robin Hood, and Fandango. Go watch Fandango. It is an incredible kind of road buddy movie. Um, I I won't even tell you what it's about. I I think I put it on a top five somewhere, maybe oh, yeah. in, in oh, the yeah. past. Uh, I love that movie. Go watch it. It's definitely worth it. Gary Oldman, Gene Hackman, and James Caan all turned down the oh, role of Deacon. God, it would uh, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Yeah, I it read I I read that he turned it down. He flipped a coin actually. He had <laughs> he, it like was a, another movie in this, and he flipped a coin. And he did the of other course movie. he did. Filming began and mostly took place in a giant seawater enclosure off the coast of Hawaii. Friend of the filmmaker, Steven Spielberg, warned them and said, do not film in the ocean. Please, God, do not do it. What do you know, Steven? <laughs> <laughs> what do you... Well, oh, wait, you have experience doing this? You done yeah, it? it's called Jaws, asshole. <laughs> called Jaws in what? 20% of the movie was on water and it was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not heeding Spielberg's advice, the production was wrought with delays and difficulties such as simple shots being ruined by the camera crew, getting forced out of position by waves, safety concerns, and one of the sets sinking into the ocean, having to repair it. And I think that set, which is the... The, 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 the atoll. The atoll, the atoll lit, like a million dollars just in itself. Oh, made it's of, more than that. We'll, we'll get to... Oh, oh yeah, that, yeah, you're it's right. It's way more than that. Um, we'll, we'll get to more of the in intricacies of that in the, in the actual episode. Eventually, these delays caused the production to go over schedule by nearly three months and increase the budget from its allocated $100 million <laughs> To 135 million and then to 175 million dollars. Mm. The relationship between Kevin Reynolds and Kevin Costner, the Kevins, were also straining near the end of production. Reynolds wanted the character of the Mariner to be more swashbuckling and heroic like Indiana Jones, while Costner wanted the character to be more stoic and selfish like Mad Max. This, among other disagreements, led to Reynolds walking away from the movie and leaving Costner to finish some shots as well as sit in on the edits of the movie. Reynolds would later remark that Costner should only star in movies he himself directs. That way he can work with his favorite actor and director. <laughs> That's so good. That's a, it's That's a good line. A it's very good. <laughs> That's a good line. Speaking of, edits, uh, speaking of edits, the movie, there are effectively three cuts of this film, including the theatrical, theatrical cut, the nearly three-hour-long television cut, and the Ulysses cut, which is an amalgamation of the previous two. Um, I know you'll probably get into it a little bit more, AJ, but um, that you w watched some other cuts of this movie. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. When filming was completed, there were originally rumors. There were already rumors spreading amongst Hollywood about the tumultuous production and the bloated over budget. Effectively, these rumors led press and peers to have a preconceived notion that this water world would uh, tank at the box office and essentially just be a bad movie. People called the film Fishtar after the famed box office bomb Ishtar <laughs> and Kevin's Gate after the <laughs> flop like of one. Heaven's Gate. Uh, <laughs> the, film, the film was released on July 28th, 1995 and on a budget of $175 million, which was the largest budget at the time, like uh, Mike said. Uh, the film would make $264.2 million at the box office, would spawn a video game, and be one of the most legendarily marred productions of all time. My friends, let me paint you a picture of my crazy life. Aside from the confused breakfast, I'm a full-time realtor. I play drums in a band that plays 50 to 60 shows a year. And my wife and I just had our first baby, little baby Willa. You can imagine that my free time is absolutely precious, but you can also know that I'm a frugal guy. My bank account is almost more precious than my free time. So after we had our baby, we pretty much dropped endless amounts of money ordering takeout and DoorDash for like a year. It obliterated my bank account. And when I found that out, I decided I'm going to go to the store now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to waste valuable time walking around the grocery store to buy food that I'll bring home and then I'll just let it spoil in my fridge after I try to make a meal for my family. So luckily, I finally found a solution that not only saves me money but also saves me time. 
If you're looking to budget your food expenses this summer, get more bang for your bite with America's Best Value Meal Kit. Every plate, now owned by our friends at HelloFresh, is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping with no hidden fees, so you can count on great value week after week. Plus, only pay for what you need with pre-portioned ingredients. That is what I'm talking about. I don't want to waste this food, and I want it delivered right to my door. Choose every plate over takeout to save some hardcore money. Their meals are 50% cheaper than your average fast casual meal. They're the easiest way to eat affordably while loading your pockets with fun money. Every plate is killing it. They provide plenty of des- delicious variety with 26 tasty and affordable recipes that change every week, including 15 minute or less dinners, oven free recipes. It's easy to find something for every single meal of the day. Plus, add even more delicious options to your order with up to 22 sides, lunches, snacks, and desserts. Plus, you can swap out proteins. You can add protein to veggie dishes. It is customizable. You do you. I will fully admit I was completely skeptical about the meal kit thing. I thought it was expensive. I just thought it wasn't for me. The meals would be tough. But I've been proven completely wrong by every plate. You guys, too, can get this same deliciousness and quality and convenience at an insanely lower price. Get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal. $1.49 $1.49 per meal. That is pure insanity. All you have to do is go to everyplate.com slash podcast. Enter code confused49. Again, get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast. Entering code confused49. It's also in the notes. You can click it on it there. I think you guys should do it. That is an incredible value, and I fully, fully endorse it. Back to the show. That's what I got. Well, thanks, Seaners. Everybody, we appreciate you being here. Two ways you can help us out for this free content we put out every week. Number one, you can support our sponsors. That's an important way to help any podcast that you listen to. Uh, you know, what do we got? Like past spot, we got the Caldera Lab, we got oh, the yeah. Bird Dogs, we got the Cedar Ridge Whiskey. Nutrafol. S- Nutrafol. So many amazing sponsors. Go Bird out, dogs. get those discount codes we have, support them. That helps support us. And number two, check us out at patreon.com com slash confused breakfast that's where you get endless endless hours of weekly bonus audio content you get to vote on upcoming movies you get a private discord channel you get to uh give your modern day ratings of all the movies we do check that out it's one of the greatest things you can do and for everybody that's already there we love you so thank you so much love you you bet patreon.com slash confused breakfast up next we have aj he does the research for us does the ratings and reviews of crayons crayons (laughs) crayons Critics and fans. He reviews crayons. <laughs> Crayola. Critics and fans. I'm not, I'm not going to say critics and fans anymore. It's just give us the ratings and reviews of crayons. <sighs> I don't know what that means, guys. Yeah. Um, no one does. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what I try to do. Bones to berries. <laughs> Phones to vines. Let's hope Kevin Costner eats these tomatoes, too. It's the Tomato Eater. <laughs> Thank you, as always, for our grace note. Yeah, that's <laughs> our grace note. Yeah, you got it, babe. Uh, this came through, guys, as a whopping 45% splat. Ah, uh, oh. no. Of all the movies we've done, that is bottom 20. Uh, that is slightly better than Mortal Kombat. Slightly worse than The Legend of Billie Jean is how the critics feel about this. Man, and that is a fun night of movies <laughs> right there. a fun night of movies, man. Come Long on. night of movies, but fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. true. yeah. <laughs> um, audiences were in agreement. So they uh, spilled their popcorn on the way out. Forty-three percent was the audience wow. score, and this came in at six point three on IMDb. Bottom fifteen of any movies we've Damn. done on IMDb, tied with Red Dawn. Just throwing it out there. That's where it's at. It's tied weird. with Red Dawn. Yes, yeah. I would watch those two movies together. Yeah. I know you would. Ulysses Cut, baby. <laughs> Um, let's start at the top here and we'll just work our way down real quick. David Anson at Newsweek gave this a 90 out of a hundred. He said it, he just simply said, it's a pretty damn good summer movie. Uh, USA Today, Mike Clark said 75 out of a hundred, uh, a two hour aquatic pursuit pick with bruising stunts, fun to watch performances, a dozen good turtles and imposing Panavision renderings, a post-apocalyptic crud. Waterworld clearly has the makings of a cult movie. Nice. And I like that, actually. Chortles. Yes. Chortles. 
Cornels? Shortles? No, I think you had it. You got it. Again. Hell yeah, bro. Um, I, I did find Roger Ebert's full review on this. He gave it a, a, a two and a half, I believe, is what he gave Whoa. it. Whoa. Yeah. Out of what? Uh, or sorry, two, two and a half <laughs> stars. So what do they do that out of four? I think it's five. Is it five? See, he makes up his own rules. So he who makes up his own rules. See, it, well, today a, we're going to use four stars, but the last we used five. Exactly. It just doesn't matter. I think you are right. It is four, but okay. Semantics. Uh, yeah. Um, let's just make up some more shit, guys. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, so here it is at last. Waterworld. <laughs> two years and two hundred million dollars in the making. In the, old, in the old days in Hollywood, they used to brag about how much a movie would cost. Now, they apologize. There's been so much publicity about this movie's budget that a review of the story seems beside the point. I should just print the spreadsheets. He said, The cost controversy aside, Waterworld is a decent futuristic action picture with some great sets, some intriguing ideas, and a few Im- images that will stay with me. It could have been more, it could have been better, and it could have made it could have made me care about the characters. It's one of those marginal pictures. You're not unhappy to have seen it, but can't quite recommend it. That is excellent. It might be the best review that he has done on this show. Yeah, yeah. I, I really respect the fact that he looked past all of that preconceived notion bullshit that everyone was talking about and was like, no, but this is we haven't talked about the movie yet. Right. <laughs> exactly. Has anyone no one's ever seen it yet, you assholes. So I I took some excerpts from the rest of his thing uh, because uh, this will make a really great point if you watch any of the extended cuts. I think there's this will could be answered right. He said the first shot of an action hero is supposed to set the tone for a movie. Remember your initial glimpses <laughs> of James Bond or Batman or Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. um, and compare them with Waterworld, which shows Mariner peeing into a bottle, <laughs> pouring the fluid into a homemade chemistry set. Cranking a handle to process it and then drinking it. Then he gargles, spits uh, a little on his lime tree, so we know where he gets his fresh water and his vitamin C. I would have welcomed more details about the global floating culture that Mariner is a part of. But like so many science fiction movies, this one bypasses the best possibilities of the genre. Instead of science and speculation, we get a lot of violent action scenes. Mm. Um, It said... It's uh, It said, Waterworld's first cut was a good deal longer than the final 120 minutes running time, uh, and you can sense that occasionally. Uh, as when the Mariner fights off an attack by the smokers, then immediately takes Helen uh, on the trip beneath the sea, uh, when it seems the smokers must still be in sight. <laughs> uh, but basically, the movie plays smoothly as a combination of chases, fights, bizarre locations, special effects, and the cold, distant, slowly thawing behavior of Mariner towards his passengers. I'll remember some of the sights in Waterworld for a long time, but I won't necessarily want to see them again. Mm. Cool. So there you go. Um, there were some people who thought that this movie was phenomenal. They loved it. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys some quickies here, though, okay? Um, never understood the hate. Um, they said 10 out of 10. Uh, I- I've... Because of the terrible reviews, I didn't see this film uh, for years after it was released, but eventually caught it in DVD. Uh, I really liked it and couldn't see why it was supposedly a turkey. I watched it many times over the years, and it really is a misunderstood classic. Yes, it's a bit stupid once Dennis Hopper starts chewing the scenery, but it's a thousand times better than most productions lined of crap produced nowadays. How about uh, a, a fun 10 out of 10? This is by Snake Accident. Who called it a masterpiece? <laughs> snake Whoopsie. That's right. In 2021, s- he's just happy there's no snakes. Snake accident <laughs> because the world's covered. He did not like Indiana Jones. I <laughs> uh, gave it a one out of ten for Indiana Jones. He gave this one a ten out of ten. He said all reviews of this uh, of this saying the film are, saying the film are pretty far off. Uh, an absolutely brilliant glimpse of our very near future. I would recommend it be viewed in all fourth grade classes around the globe. Okay. All right. Calm down there, Greta Thunberg. Okay. <laughs> Just back off. Um, last one, guys. One out of ten. This destroyed Costner's career as a rising star, said Lloyd Allred. Warning spoilers. Early in the movie, Costner's character says that it's okay to share a woman with the man he runs across. Ugh. <laughs> 
This idea opens most women and should should have been most men. Costner could have demanded the line be changed, but he didn't. Movie actors need to be very careful about the roles they take. Mm, 10 out of 10? One out of 10. One out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> because it's... You get to decide the writing. Yep, yep. And you should determine how a story is told. And the final edits and everything. Yes, like you right. get full. Everyone on the set gets to actually have a say. That's in right. That. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We should change the story and character of the character. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Well, my dudes, if there's a river, we'll damn it. And if there's a tree, we'll ram it. Because I'm talking progress here. Yes, sir. I'm talking development. <laughs> For we shall suck and savor the sweet flavor of dry land. Here we go. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Scene one. Sea levels have risen and the entire earth is underwater. People live on floating communities called atolls. The mariner, a lone drifter, has a run-in with a thief and has to evade a gang of pirates called smokers. He arrives at an atoll to trade for other supplies. When the atoll's residents see that the mariner is a mutant, they take his stuff and put him in a cage. I mean, if you're going to do a movie where the polar ice caps have melted and you, it's done by Universal, you have to do this. Pretty seems awesome. like a slam dunk of you an opportunity. You have to do this, yeah. yeah. It also seems like they're like, you're like, oh, hell yeah, that's awesome. And then they decide that they need to have someone yeah. give exposition for like five seconds that would never, ever happens the rest of the movie. Right. It made no sense to me. I was like, why, why, do, why are we having this person say this when we can easily learn any of this information as the movie goes on? Well, there's one, there is one key giveaway, Mike, and that's the title of the movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, like, wait, what's this about? We didn't the expo- <laughs> What? what? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, the whole world is water? I need to know <laughs> more. Oh, water world. Oh, <laughs> Why is he on a boat the whole time? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't need that. I don't need it. I like it because it, it adds this, like, it's like this ominous tone kind of to the movie. But I do wish there would have been reason to maybe have him bring it back. If you're only going to do it once, you could have just left it out. Yeah. Yeah. We have plenty. We learn plenty of stuff about this movie. In fact, we don't even learn enough about this movie, but we learn yeah. everything that we learn from that little bit of dialogue in the beginning. We learn it at some point in the next 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So who cares? Right. What do you think about, we talked about character introductions and so did Ebert. The Just straight off the bat, just our main character drinks his own piss. Drinking pee pee. How do you start a movie like that? That is a bold move. <laughs> hey, man, Bear Grylls is a tough motherfucker, too. He is. And uh, I, I respect him. He drinks his own pee. He doesn't even filter it. No. Let's be real. No, he straight up just guzzles it. Yep. <laughs> old, old Bear. You yeah. think you think you go to his house and his fridge is filled with containers filled of his piss? Oh, oh, Maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, well, depends you know, on how thirsty he's been that day you, you know? can yeah. get electrolytes from somewhere else bear bear i also thought i was watching encino man for a second did you know you know when encino man, yes. when he like jumps on the boat and he goes and he like, and he like smells this the, the plant or something like that i swear to god for one second i was like is that Brandon Fraser? Yeah, every I time think Brandon he, Fraser could have done a better job in this movie, maybe, to tell you the truth. Maybe, yeah, it is true. Every time he like hears something, too, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> he's surprised by everything, you know? Jeez. Let's, let's talk about Kevin Costner, though. Do, do you realize what, who, what kind of a star he was when this movie came out? Yeah. His run before this happened, 1988 started Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, Dances with Wolves, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, The Bodyguard in four years. Mm-hmm. I mean, the man the man is a megastar, but then you look at you look at what happens after this and it's like ugh, like nothing really happens after yeah. this. This and the the postman, which I've never seen before, but it's you, it's yeah. 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 Do you like Kevin Costner as the Mariner in this movie? I really do to be honest. Yeah? I th- I think that he is giving it his all I think that he is super invested in this character. Or like invested in the in the film getting done at least. He's certainly in the, invested in the movie. Yeah, yeah he, he did invest in the movie. Oh yeah, like twenty two <laughs> million dollars. Yeah, he gave it like twenty two million of his own money. He got a he got a divorce while this mm-hmm. movie was, was being filmed. He worked what like two hundred days in a row 
to get this. Like he was on set. He almost six died days a week. Yeah, six days a week two, for 200 days. He almost drowned like twice. He almost got struck by lightning when he's he got left up <laughs> on the flagpole up on the mast. on the mast. He got left up there during a squall because they couldn't get him down. They in couldn't time. get like, to him. Well, Whatever. And he started floating away, right, like out to sea. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they had to go get him. That, that he would did. freak me out. He he flew away. He floated floated away. His stunt double floated Laird away. Laird Hamilton, right. by yeah. the way. Yeah, Surfer. was this? Yeah, Laird Hamilton lived on. They filmed this. Where? What island did they film this on? Of the Hawaii. Um, was it Maui? The Hawaii, or the, was it just? I thing. thought it was a smaller island, was but regardless, small? Laird lived on a separate island, mm. and I heard a story that oh, yeah. he would take a jet ski to work and back every day, 40 miles across the open ocean. <laughs> I mean, what? You know, That's he's Laird just, Hamilton, He's just though. getting into character. <laughs> it's just... That's how I got into character, <laughs> just jet skiing, yeah. forty miles like a smoker. I I do like it, man. I I really do think that like, out of all you hear about the the background of this production and everything, and like even the fights with him and the other Kevin, are like you you could like maybe see some like cracks in his performance, and you, know, you can see like some of the push and pull of what they wanted the character to be. I think that comes through. Yeah. But it's still a character, and I, I, I think that he's doing a great job doing all these action scenes, especially. And um, like, yeah, there's not there's not one moment where I'm like, uh, he's just phoning it in. No, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I really like him in this. I can't think of anybody necessarily that I would want. Like, oh, I definitely would rather have Brendan Fraser, mm-hmm. Academy Award winner. Fraser. There you go, Academy Award. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Uh, Tom Cruise could play this. Academy Award winner. <laughs> He's too short. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like, I can't think of anybody like that. I Whoa. that I definitely was like, oh no way, no way. Um, but I really do like his performance, and you can definitely tell they. I think they kind of made mention like the divorce he was going yeah. through. It was a pretty nasty divorce. Oh yeah. And Kevin Reynolds mentioned that he thinks that's why it added to his performance of playing it cold. Right. Mm. You know. The one thing I'm torn on, though, is I hate when movies, when they call him the Mariner, mm. yeah. like when he doesn't have a name. So I'm like, half of me wants to hate that. But then the other half of me is like, well, what would his name have been? Steve? Like, <laughs> hi, I'm Steve. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Uh, what do you have for trade here? Yeah. Like, uh, that, that would have been weird, too. So I, I don't know. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be McCracklets <laughs> something. McCracken. <laughs> what was your name earlier? Oh, yeah. Carcruthers. Thurston. Thurston Carcruthers. Uh, do you have dirt available for trade? Everybody's everybody's kid is named Thurston because they're all Thurston. They're very, very. That's why that's what's gonna happen in this movie. I uh, like I like how oh. he's like we see him in introduction and he's drinking his piss and when this guy comes he holds up a bucket. I'm like, no, we don't need shit. No, we don't need your shit bucket. I can't process. that. I don't know what this. you're doing on that boat though, Mariner. You know what are you doing on there? And but but I will say like all the contraptions and shit on his boat, like everything. Uh, like set wise in this movie is outstanding. Yes, uh, it's probably the best part of this movie. Yeah, the, I think the it money is. they spent on that shit. Well, the sailboat, me being a licensed. I know you. Captain, I wanted. To, I there was a lot about information about this boat, but I wanted you to take it. Yeah, I, I didn't. I don't have a ton, but from what I know, I mean, they built. This is a real working trimaran, uh, and they. I think they had two of them. They had one that was used for the sailing sequences, and one that was used more for the shots of 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 being on the boat, but. This is a legit sailboat, and this is one of the coolest fucking sailboats I've ever seen. Like, they could have really phoned this in, and they could have made it really sci-fi sort of. Like, it is, to an extent, there is some weird, like, the contraptions are weird. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you hit this, and that goes, and blah, blah, blah. But it, like, it works, and mm-hmm. it all feels like it's real. And it feels yeah. like, apparently, Kevin Costner is a sailor. And I guess he took the boat out for a couple weeks before this just to get used to it. And like he wanted to look like he knew what he was doing mm. on the boat. And I feel like he did. I, I think he did. I, I totally believed he did. The way he, I like that he kind of, the way he zips around. Yes. He's, he's that comfortable on his boat that he just kind of grabs that thing and, and he'll Georgia the jungle across his own boat. I love that aspect. I think about that's it. really cool. Yep. It's very smart rather than having to like fumble your way across these nets. It makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. That actually, you're right. And yeah, the boat. I guess it was like it was like 60 feet long, and it was just it was really badass. The one things I didn't 
like about it, though, was the portrayal of like just how easy that was to move around and quick turns. And, you know, I mean, if you know anything about sailing, like if you're you're at the mercy of the wind, Mm -hmm. you can't go directly into the wind. You have to you have to have about a 90 degree angle there. So being able to just make these quick turns and like do that and I'm going to go over there real quick and then I'm going to go over here. That's a little unbelievable. The fact that they portray that this sailboat can outrun jet skis Mm -hmm. is I mean, that (laughs) that, can't. No, that boat that boat probably gets some serious speed, but we're talking thirty knots maybe at, in, on a perfect wind filled day. What mm-hmm. happens when what happens when there's not wind? You know what like they right. yeah. what, what are they doing at that point? You I don't know? know that that was my question too because like a lot of them mostly like the people out there like him and the guy he encounters are like have sailboats and I'm like. <laughs> yeah. we're not going anywhere no <laughs> and the fact that they portrayed that it could his boat like took out the mast of that other guy's boat right it's gonna cause some damage to your boat yeah you can't the the ocean is such an unforgiving place like above and below that most boats like we're talking mega yachts uh cruise ships sailboats they can't be out at ocean for more than like a couple months without needing a week or two of like repair hole repairs and 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 cleaning cleaning barnacles off of the bottom ah. so so it's it's a little hard for me to fathom what the of these boats has been like yeah we all live on boats and everything's fine and nothing breaks i agree it's a you. little hard to fathom but i i mean whatever Who yeah knows? like i i totally get that and and that's the thing of there has to be all of these atolls right that are kind of floating around the thing i thought about his boat was how many times do you think he accidentally like trips because of the, it's the sea and he just trips over and knocks his like sail thing it just goes <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh damn it no <sighs> oh, i got i don't i really should make an undo button for this so it's like could <laughs> you Comes all comes back in. It's, you're right because it's basically just over. this little leather yeah. or lever. It's he's just like goes, he kicks two things. If, like he's one, he's one bad step away from pulling a Gregor and just knocking into that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but they it, get to the atoll and like it, it's like like I said, these sets yeah. are just incredible, and uh, I do believe every second of them. Most of them, like well, this one is like made of steel and wood and like balsa wood and whatever. Not that sturdy, not that great of like structure or anything. They said or they would have if they could have just done it all out of wood. Yeah. Um, but what do they put in their dead end? Like pea soup? Like what is this? Split pea soup. Is yeah. It? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got to be some sort of like a compost pile or something yeah. made out of sea things. I mean, what if, whatever they do with their, you know, he's drinking his piss. It's got to be just a puddle of bodily fluids so so this is this is where i will say like watching i found the ulysses cut and i watched it do they explain more things they explain a lot more about why they do certain things okay like uh for instance right one of the things is like well if they've got this water purifier right then and there then why don't they just purify seawater and it's like because and they explain the salt water is too hard on the filters that we're using to to process these. But your things. piss is fine. But the, the the piss apparently isn't isn't a sal uh, salinated. Okay. You know what I mean. So that's what they're saying. That that's what they that they have to replace whatever they use as filters way too often. At one point, they talked about how the filtration processes were actually much more like crude, and they actually inv- one of them actually involved like a human kidney, mm. like oh or liver or something like that. Uh, to process like water, um, but I then like you have. That. I mean, it's pretty I like intense. That a lot. Yeah, and so then you have. You saw a lot more of the world, like kind of what surrounds, especially this atoll. There's a lot of people actually outside trying to get into this atoll. Okay, right, right. So right. there's actually a lot more people, and ve- on very small boats, just be like, "Come on, hey, let us in. I've got things I want to trade. I want to. I want to come in. I need water. I need all this." And you got all these like people who are on like small boats. I wish they would do that more or show you other people's boats more because the Mariner's boat big. Yeah. By comparison, it's very big. Imagine being on like a small like a boat like this, the size of this table <laughs> that has some cover on some of it. Yeah. That's what a lot of pe- other people were in outside this atoll. And then you get inside. There's actually a lot more trees inside. They actually have like trees and so like they're growing forest. food yeah. and stuff inside. Right. 
And then they also, it's basically that stuff is where they like compost things. Mm. Oh, okay. And that's why they put the dead into there. And that's why they have that chant that bones to berries, veins to vines, like this person yep. uh, mm. return to our soil so we can then buy. Basically, fertilize, yeah. fertilize what the rest we need of to their do. stuff. That's cool, and that's what they're talking about. This These whole are the time. things I want. I would rather have the movie about. I want right. to learn those things. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about the Mariner and and his mutation and stuff like that. Like, I want to know how did we get? How did we get to this point? Yeah, what did we do wrong? How how long did it take for us to figure these things out? How are we making water? How are we making food? Like I, I want to know those things. It is very interesting, and and like the the conceit of this whole thing of you know the whole Earth being uh, underwater. We're humans are very adaptable. Yeah, and uh, I like to see how that happens, and that is all, all those details that were cut out are very interesting. <laughs> they're they're fascinating. I would recommend it. Like if you if you're more interested in that stuff, I would absolutely recommend seeing the Ulysses cut for that. The things that do give more like exposition of the story itself, some of it's take it or leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Mariner, I'm performing my dance quintet tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you see that? No. The merchant guy is uh dude's landlord. Jack he, Keller. Yes. Jack Keller. I, I looked at him, I was like, Oh my god, <laughs> he's doing his dance. Oh! Hey Mariner. <laughs> you know my cycle. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah, man! Yeah, yeah. Man. dudes, there just saying. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been tight. <laughs> Three point two kilos. <laughs> ah, I do love. I do love the. I never understood it uh, more than I understand it now. Is that he? You know, like he's on there and everybody's walking. He's like, "Why are you talking to me?" That that guy comes up to the bar. Yeah. And he's basically like. Don't talk to me. Why are you talking to me? That's just basically post COVID for everyone. Yeah. Like yeah. you're in public and you're just like, why are you talking to me? Man, I don't know. <laughs> pushing, how many, pushing that other guy away. Dude, at the I don't bar know how many stop. times I've been to a bar where so, like some like I, I would have to imagine old regular is just like <laughs> <laughs> staring at me. Like I'm drinking my beer. And he's just like, how many times I just want to be like, and you're just like, what? Go away. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> do you think do you think this whole mutation thing like is a necessary plot in this movie? Like I um, I get it. I get it that we sort of need it. That's how he achieves the things he achieves and yeah. that's how he gets the dirt and his stuff. But like when did when did that become like a oh we he needs to be mutated? Well, the only part Which is never explained. The only part is for when he goes down and all yeah. breathe for both of us. Is mm -hmm. that, I mean, is that it? Couldn't we have found a cr more creative way around it? I think he's a fast swimmer. I don't know. I just, I, I feel the more, the more I watch this movie, the less I'm, I give a fuck about like, oh, wow, he can breathe underwater. No, uh, and you tell know, me why. Prosthetics look gross. They look like little vaginas <laughs> on his ears. And I didn't appreciate that at all. Um, you did it? Well, no. No. You, you look at one, it's just, it's not that great, you know? This is, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? No. Okay. The, this is the part is another part where there there is a small amount of exposition that's given here that is important uh in the longer cut and it, it it does show how much animosity there actually is towards Enola and Helen. Cuz you don't among the people among the on people the, there. On the atoll. Cuz I guess well, let me ask you guys how much do you feel like they they dislike Helen or Enola? Helen seemed to have like a nice job. They feel like to me and I, I I guess it might be pretty obvious that they are just trying to blend in because they're trying to hide uh, Enola and like uh, McGregor. Like they just, it seems like I've seen, I've seen that in a movie before where that, that relationship of like, Oh, that my science experiment to keep her under, <laughs> undercover. You right. Know, try not yeah. to show that tattoo. I felt that about it, but I didn't like see or like feel hate between everybody else. Yeah. So there is a point where they actually have the actual like meeting the clan meeting mm. at night while he's in that cage. Uh, okay. They actually have that. And during that time, Helen speaks up and says something about like, well, you need like, he could help us. He's mm. like, why do we need to like put, kill him right away? And they kind of turn their focus to them and they say, well, everything's been going to trouble ever since that girl uh. showed up and you took her in and maybe we should just get rid of all of them, get rid of all three of you. Mm. Gotcha. And that's kind of what they say. Um, the smokers have been after her, that kind of stuff. Right. So there is this animosity that's actually towards them and why she is going to Gregor asking to get out more. That makes sense. And so there again, it's like, okay, now I understand why they want help from them, not just to get out. It kind of helps explain a little bit more. Yeah. And and again, they didn't need all of it, 
But that little nugget, yeah. that, that minute and a half would have been great to have. Yeah. Confused Breakfast listeners, today's episode is sponsored by Bird Dogs. I've legitimately been looking for a company that makes versatile shorts and pants that I can wear while I'm running errands, working out, traveling, even trying to look stylish on the town. After everything that I've tried, Bird Dogs finally gave me what I've been wanting. These truly are the ultimate shorts for the modern adventurer. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Doing the exact same thing as Lululemon, Lululemon, but they fit way better. I have a pair of Fart Garfunkel shorts. Their names are incredible. Just go to the website just to read the names. They are amazing. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton because Bird Dogs invented cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so that you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Also, interestingly enough, Bird Dogs have an integrated built-in liner offering unparalleled support and eliminating the need for underwear. Say goodbye to uncomfortable chafing and hello to freedom. I've never admitted this in public before, um, but I haven't worn underwear for a week, Craig. And like, it's no, and it's been the best thing that has ever happened to me. Seriously, no chafing, no unnecessary sweat. I feel great, and Bird Dogs made it happen. You need a place to stash your phone, wallet, or keys. Bird Dog has you covered there, too. Deep, secure pockets. You can keep your essentials close without worrying about them falling out during your adventures. Uh, whether you're hitting the trails, hitting the weights, or just hitting the couch, Bird Dogs will be your new favorite shorts. I guarantee it. Why wait? Upgrade your active wear game today. Go to birddogs.com slash confused or enter promo code confused for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash confused promo code confused for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't take your bird dogs off. We promise you trust us. This is your new go-to short. I guarantee it. And you get a tumbler. Cool. This guy, like the Deacon's right hand man, long hair red guy, he looks mm. like Doctor Faulkner from <laughs> totally Bio. Yes, he does. Man. I thought he was. Ever since I've seen this movie, I'm like, that's the same guy. That's Faulkner, yeah. right? <laughs> no, that guy. I, he was really close to being my punchable face. I didn't know okay. if anybody wants that yet. I'm not, I, I'm not going at it, but technically, I have my punchable face at this point. And it's not him, though. No. We don't have. It has to I come about. It. You want it? You want a punchable face right now? I have a punchable face, and it, and it is this point. Okay, so here yeah. we go. Hit it. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. See if you guys can guess it. He's a mutant. <laughs> 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 You mean the guy wearing a hat that doesn't that actually doesn't, have a hat on correct. it? Correct. Like, it's just wires. It's, it's Captain Pointless hat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like most of them, it's basically all the elders, but it's mostly that guy. He's a mutant. Which is like, is that bad? Why do they? Why, this uh, yeah. kind of goes back to this. Why do they care that he's a mutant? Yeah, I don't. I why don't, do they didn't need he to just kill give him? you dirt? He just gave you dirt, and you gave him stuff, and now yep. he's gonna leave, right? So you traded, you bartered, you did your thing, and now like you're good. Like, oh, so so we'll see you maybe next time you want to trade. Maybe come back with some more dirt. Maybe he could like maybe next time we just say, hey, you're very welcome here. Next time you get more dirt, hey, bring it back in. We'd love to trade more with you. I'd like to breathe stuff. underwater with you. Sometime. That'd be amazing. And why don't we, we get to spake out under the, under the waves? Why don't we see any other mutants ever? In yeah. the movie, it's just Costner, Mariner, Ulysses. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm punching Ulysses. Whoa. <laughs> you're punching him, huh? And yeah. you're calling him Ulysses? Yeah. You, okay. you say Ulysses. Ulysses? I, I say Ulysses. Yeah, Tomato. okay, okay. okay, okay. Either but way. you're going to punch him. Tomato, tomato, Why are you going to punch him? Just because he's a mutant he's an and asshole. you don't like people that are different? He's an he asshole. Is, he is a piece of shit. He's a yeah. dick. No. I know he like he changes his ways. And like, oh, I, I'm, I'm I'm the cliche father figure. Though I I usually hate children, but now during the course of the story, now I'm a father figure to this one thing. No, oh, they didn't like me, and they don't like her. We have something in common. Oh, the commonality. We're both outcasts. Oh, look at us. Oh man. Oh, my feelings are changing. Oh. You expect me to feel some way? Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, character development. Oh. What's gonna happen to my character arc? I like your movie better. I like this. This is a great movie here. You're punching him. I'm going. Uh, I want the gunner guy uh, from the from oh, the smoker. The guy that looks like a pig. He's basically like a pig the, nose. the guitar player in Fury Road, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. I I don't know what it is about that guy. I have always just hated his face. 
<laughs> in this movie because he's it just the way is he's got the goggles but then something covers his nose yeah. and makes him look like a pig mm. anybody else feel that way yeah I, it, yeah I do feel that way yeah. and it's it's him just go it's just <laughs> 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 what is this chuck no maybe answers to charles got charles <laughs> uh well, real quick before we move in two two fun facts uh do you know what an atoll is do you have you ever heard that word uh -uh. before an atoll is the actual name of a ring-shaped island with a lagoon in the middle of it mm. Which is awesome because that's what this is. You're right, right. So I don't know if 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 that was just if they knew what that was way back in the day before the Earth flooded, kind of a thing, or that's just a less of a gulf and more of a, a full yeah, like a, like a full kind of. ring, a full okay. ring of like islands, and then inside is just water and cool. lagoon, kind of a thing. You, uh, you got to talk. We, I don't know how much we've mentioned about this set piece, like really, but I mean, this thing did cost like eleven million dollars. Mm -hmm. It took. It was the like, entire the entire uh, amount of steel and metal from the island of more. Hawaii. They, they had to and they had to ship, ship more in, in more steel. Yeah, just to build this thing. Yeah, and also in all the money they put into this thing, all the dedication so that they could film on this, they didn't put a single bathroom in there. Right. Wow. None of the support boats and none of the of the set had bathrooms. So literally everyone on set shat. And pissed in the ocean. Good God, in Hawaii, you know, in there Hawaii. were there were they were ferrying people every like here and there, like cat some crew and some cast. But you're right. Imagine, I mean, let's be honest. Imagine being on that ferry and be like, "Fuck, it's been like eight hours. Eight hours. <laughs> like, dude. Your, your bladder is about to leave yourself." I just I think it's fascinating, and that place was huge. I mean, that place was the size of a football stadium. Yeah, it was like right. it was some crazy like. It was like a mile around, or like a qu three quarters of a mile, a, a, a cir circumference. That's th that they built this set. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty in impressive. Yeah, I know, like there was an interview with like the the production manager, or, like the the set builder, um, and they gave him like the the uh, outlay of like the drawing, pretty much of like you know the mock up of the of the whole thing. And they're like, yeah, we want this to be like pretty much life size. And he's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, we don't actually have to build the whole. But thing. But we're right? doing like miniatures and stuff. No, no, we no, no, no. We really want it to be real. You want it? You want? Oh boy! You want me to? You know how much this is going to take, right? Cost. And then they're ferrying this out every yes, single day. Every yeah. single day. They they had time for like I think they said three setups every day. Yeah. At the end of everything really being said and done, getting started, getting into place and position, hoping to God nobody had to go take a piss. Then, then what taking the shots, nightmare. and then hopefully getting the shots. About three shots and scenes a day, on average. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, well, I, they did. They did uh, get a lot of uh, economy into Hawaii. Though. It was like a thirty-five they million did. dollars. They, they <laughs> employed the like four hundred and fifty yeah. people or something like that, which is well, great. You love to hear cool. that. Yeah. Well, you gotta you gotta hand it to the people who were there too because they charged them top dollar because they're like, yeah, That's well, who true. else are you gonna go to? As they sh as <laughs> yeah. they one hundred percent should. Were the contractors, the caterers, like all those guys? They were the body the doubles. Island, the yeah, like everybody was like top dollar. <laughs> Like cost, mm. and I guess that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So, scene two: the atoll is attacked by smokers seeking a girl named Enola, who can lead them to dry land. Enola's guardian, Helen, frees the mariner, and he escapes with them on his boat. Deacon, the head of the smokers, goes back to his ship and hatches a plan to catch them. While the mariner debates throwing Helen and Enola overboard, should we just get into Dennis Hopper at this point? If you're gonna do a '90s action movie. You got to have Dennis Hopper. Do you have to, though? <laughs> pop, quiz. pop quiz, hot shot. I said pop shot. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going. I like the notion. I like yeah, it a lot. Pop shot. Ah, oh, shit. Pop shot quiz. Pop shot quiz. <laughs> But do you, I mean, do you have to, right? So so consulting the, the Jarrett Layoff uh, Confused Breakfast actor database, Dennis Hopper, this is now his fourth movie he's done. Mm. Wow. He, he leads all cast members in Waterworld. Fourth movie that he's done that we have reviewed. Um, and I go back to, you know, remember what they are? It's True Romance, yep. uh, Speed, uh, uh, Super, Super Mario, Mario Brothers. Brothers in this. Yeah. And, and like, I'm looking at all four of those movies. I'm like, man, I really liked him in True Romance. I, I didn't really like him in the other movies. And I, I and he's like the same character he is. in Speed, Super Mario Brothers, and this. There is a certain charm about him being a bad guy in movies that I love. But yeah. 
but you're right. There is there is really nothing different about all of those characters except this one. Maybe he is losing an eye, and the other one he's got spiky hair, and the other one he just he just loves bombs. Like he is, he does have a certain amount of chewing the scenery, which I fucking love right. about actors. But it's just a bad guy in this. There's no there's nothing interesting about him. Nothing. At all. I don't find anything s- like crazy fascinating, or and maybe this is again. Why not give us a little bit more about why he is the leader of this? Mm-hmm. I yeah. buy the other guy as a, ba- a head bad guy more, you know? The, I, the Faulkner guy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A Dr. Faulkner. He's way more of a bad guy. <laughs> I see um, that. But, and, and there's a point where I wish we had more time without him losing that eye. I don't know why, <laughs> but. Why, or is, just just start with the eye gone. Yeah, or just start with the eye gone. <laughs> yeah, he, he had to get it done from the Mariner, so there's some vendetta. Uh, but but you don't, you don't feel that. And you I also think, don't need it. I think I'm with you, AJ, because that is on, that's his only character thing he has <laughs> in this whole movie is like his eye. Yeah. Like he's missing his eye, and there's like jokes about it and shit, but that's about it, right? Yeah, and, and I, I just think it would have... I w- would like a little bit more context again about why he is the one that they're following, right? Like, mm-hmm. why is there this religion? And that's the thing you got to remember is that this the smokers is is borderline at like a religious like cult mm-hmm. kind of a thing. It's, Seriously, it's, it's not like pirates. It's like a it's like a cult almost that they're they're worshiping the old captain from the Exxon Valdez. Yeah, and they're uh, from the oil spill. Yeah. And they they take away little bits of this, like when he's about to shoot both of those guys who are hanging up after they take the atoll. They have this moment of like religious sermon that's in there, and you see the guys like those smokers going in and cutting down trees and taking stuff and basically plundering the the town mm. like Viking style. And you get this little bit of like religious like ceremony that gets taken out. And again, you're just like, oh, they're just. They're just bad guys. Now, now all they are is just bad guys. I have a question for you: Is now this, they're dead is, bad guys? <laughs> is this the first time you've watched the uh, Ulysses cut? Yep. Okay. Yep. And are you mad about it? Am I mad about not watching the Ulysses cut sooner? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I did now. Because, like, I understand why they cut what they cut. Yes. But they could have found a healthy balance, and they could have given about 18 minutes back from what they cut. And you would have gotten ten times more context. Mm. So that's the problem. Yeah, I know that there is like there's comics after this as well that like even explain how he became a mutant. Like he was he his father, he was with his father, he like killed his father, and then he was experimented on, like that kind of shit. Um, there's a whole YouTube channel dedicated to just lore about Water world made up lore, right? Like yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. fan fiction or yeah, like stuff like that. It's, it's called the Atoll, and uh, the host is very interesting. I'll say that. Um, <laughs> Hit us up, bro. We, you know, we get this epic action set piece, and it's fucking phenomenal. Isn't this what the Universal Studios show is based yes. off of? And it's Has, fucking, have you seen it? I have. It's fucking legit. There, there are people out there that are like, "Hey, Water World's See? fucking garbage," but. If you have a chance, ten out of ten recommend watch the live action show at Disney World. It's or, or so you. good. <clears throat> I, I would I would love to see it. I would love to like have that opportunity somehow. Yeah. Um, but and and this is this is why the movie exists anymore, right? Yeah, this because scene. of these action scenes, man. I think it's this. You scene. think it's this one? Oh, na- name a better name a better scene of the movie uh, beyond this. Like, no, yeah, I don't think so. I think this is where most of the time I would turn it off after this. Mm. Yeah, I could see that. I well, like speaking of the universal thing, one more thing about that is like, I was watching this and at the end when he's got he's like on the hook coming after the plane or whatever, I'm like where the my brain just like sh- like shut the movie off. While it was still playing, I'm like, "Where did I? Where have I seen that?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, Universal." I went there. And I remember feeling the flames. Yeah, like, I, like it all came back to me right then. It definitely, if you can, go to that show. But yeah, and it's still going. The, think about how kind of weirdly rare that is. Like, yeah, like even something like Back to the Future, the ride, which was huge, and then I think eventually got shut down because I well, whatever you know, Temple like, of the Doom, the Temple ride. of the Doom, the ride, that kind of stuff. But like, <laughs> this is still going. This is. Uh, 
freaking almost 30 years later. Yeah. And they're still like, Waterworld. Most people don't even know what Waterworld the movie is. Right. And they're like, dude, <laughs> that's the, crazy. The Universal was awesome. Yeah. They have this made up thing called Waterworld, the thing. <laughs> they have this whole. They just came up with this whole world for water. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Jeskies, how did they figure that out? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, but this this action set piece is like, it's very well directed. It's it looks super good and like very well edited. Everything about it, man, is like why isn't this movie talked about more? Yeah. Other than it being a huge flop. I know that was the big thing. They just think that the press. Like we said earlier, the press just killed this movie because they just kept thinking, well, it's going way over budget. It's going to be a huge flop. I hate that about it, man. That's I, th- I think it's really sad, honestly. It is. That's what they wanted to do with The Revenant as well. Like, there's yeah. like, oh, it's, it's, it, they're hell making that. There's, it, they're giving it so much money. It's like, you haven't even seen it yet, dude. Yeah, I, I hate that so much. Like, oh, we haven't seen anything, but it's just going to be a shit. And, and so. where, what kind of weird ass backwards thinking is that? Oh, yeah. hey, this movie is spending a lot of money. It's gonna be awesome. Oh, like, you mean like there, like why isn't that the way you should think about some it? Some people, like, I guess, people are really believing in the story. Giving man, it all man, this I think money. they're like, I think they're like, holy shit, we gotta go, we gotta go more. Yeah, we gotta do more. You mean you mean they're they're making sure that they do it right, and taking <laughs> their time, and not cutting corners, and throwing a lot of their own money into this production to make sure that it's top tier. It's gonna suck. It's probably gonna be shit. Uh, what a they're, stupid movie. Stupid they're, move. They're throwing more money to it so that we think that, that, they, that we think that they're doing more, <laughs> but we got we know what they're actually doing is just taking piles of buckets of money and just dumping it in the ocean, <laughs> and they're polluting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like the machine gun guy. I, I, I know you want to punch him. I love him. You can't. I think he is like I. I just like the aspect of it. And this is the most Mad Max thing about yes, this movie. Yes. I think is that guy, or he's just that's all he does. It's I imagine. Job. Like that's he's just in that chair the he's whole just time. Gunnery he, Charles. He's, he's got his fingers <laughs> pressing down on all all the triggers. He just they keep him unloaded when they're back home. You know, right, right. Until they need him, he's like ah. <laughs> you know, I, fuck, I, I love that aspect about it. It it, it looks it looks very good. Um, all, all their boats look really good. I like that this is you get to see all these bad guys just working together for, towards this common goal of. What of. apparently is just destroying atolls and societies. <laughs> That's what they're... Because we've talked about it, and this, I think, well, uh, maybe they make mention of this in the in the full, cu- in the regular cut. But they're like, man, there used to be an atoll like every other horizon. Mm, okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what happened. And then the, the, the little squirrely bookkeeper guy literally goes like, that's because we're doing really well. <laughs> He's like, because we're, we're killing we're it. We're doing really well. Because we're destroying them all. We're, we're literally killing it. We're, we're killing it. Bro. We're on fire. Dude. We're making sure they're on fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like McGregor, the guy who, uh, the, the rat guy in Green Mile. Yeah. I like him as an actor a lot. I like his part. He's really good. And like, yeah, I love his like blow up uh, makeshift air balloon pretty much thing. Uh, that all looks really good. Like mm-hmm. this whole thing is just pretty phenomenal looking. I do love when they finally get back to the D's because this is very like a Foot Clan hideout for me. Yes. This, this is what, what we do. do. <laughs> it's just they're <laughs> driving through it and I swear there was kids skateboarding and shit. As much as I love it, you go, you, you go fuck yourself. You're going to do a cover of Peter Gunn theme yeah. for your movie <laughs> Waterworld? I did not get it at all. No, like, I didn't like it and you got like there's something Okay, we've talked about we have talked about <laughs> awkward runners and wa- like Harrison Ford's got an awkward run, right? Does Dennis Hopper have the weirdest walk run thing? He's just <laughs> it's, it's the shoulder pads in it's that the, thing. Is it, is it the yeah? Is is it the 1990s linebacker shoulder pads he must <laughs> be wearing might, underneath that thing? Be, yeah, it looks ridiculous. Uh, so he gets Helen and uh, uh, Enola, Enola. On, onto the boat. And I just I, I wanted the first thing to say to, that he says to them is just like, well, that was crazy, guys. Uh, anyway, you want some piss? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any of you guys got any piss? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been kind of running low on piss. Can you guys pee into this machine I, for I, me? I need your piss. I've actually never seen a woman piss before. How does that work? Yeah. Can you uh, show me? <laughs> that happens in the Ulysses No, cut. it doesn't. No, they, it doesn't. He pees into it, and then, I, and then they go and offer up theirs to be... Filter. Time out, Sean. Oh Whatever my. we say, he's just gonna be like, "That's in the Ulysses," because <laughs> yeah, exactly. he knows we're never. Ulysses cut it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bruce, the jo- the shark from Jaws, comes out. And, oh yeah. And gets, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, it's crazy. 
<laughs> so crazy. Shit. No, that didn't. Oh, before we hit the home stretch of this episode, thank God Waterworld is just taxing me right now. We got to talk about Cedar Ridge whiskey, the best whiskey in the entire world. You've heard us like, unless this is your first episode, you've heard us talk about Cedar Ridge for probably like two and a half years now. If you have tried it, I guarantee you love it and you want more. If you haven't tried it, what are you waiting for? It is seriously the best tasting whiskey you'll ever have, and they have so much variety to choose from. You can get their flagship bourbon, which is absolutely perfect if you're making a craft cocktail. That's like put a cube of ice in there, get some bitters in there, make an old-fashioned. You can try their American Quintessential Single Malt, which, by the way, is one of the best tasting like single malts that I think I've ever had. I'm not even a single malt guy. And something about this, just you put a cube in it, you da- you get the whiskey right on the top of it, and something about the the cube and the water just brings out this insane flavor that I love to sip on. Uh, or you can try their collaboration with Slipknot, number nine. They I think they blended like a rye and a bourbon together. They've got wheat whiskey. They've got vodka. I mean, they do everything. CedarRidgeDistillery.com. Go check them out. Try to get some from your local distillers. Or, sorry, distillers. Don't get them from them. Get them from your local distributors. If they don't have them, you can go to cedarridgedistillery.com and you can order it straight to your door in the majority of states. Check it out. It's like whiskey's like a little warm blanket, just like the movie Waterworld. Well, not so much Waterworld, but other movies that we do. Let's get back to it. No. <laughs> do they explain in the uh, Ulysses cut that yes. Enola spelled backwards is alone? No, but I was going to get there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it is really cool. Isn't it cool? Wow. Wow, what's it mean? It's like, I don't know. I don't know why it has actually, to be alone. Uh, I actually don't really know. Well, so. because the Mariner's alone a lot. Yeah, and because, <laughs> like, and because she's now alone in the world because her parents, see, here's uh, what happened. Her parents discovered a paradise, and and they wanted all the people to come to their paradise. And and so and so they tattooed on the... Uh, and then they were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's literally what this fucking story is. It, it is what it is. Oh. They they show that uh, they she basically showed up like freaking um, Moses or whatever in a basket at this atoll on like in this basket on a bed of dry with a dirt, tattoo on her back with a tattoo on her which back. by the way which then apparently has now... hasn't stretched no, out or no 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 Tat- everyone knows that if Tattoos you tattoo a baby same. which i just tattooed my right. one-year-old daughter for Got a one-year-old to. birthday yeah. it's gonna be nice. the same size forever perfect yeah, it's gonna be what awesome. if like wouldn't it be better if they call her like d- like do not denice disneyly like Dis- island backwards is yeah like just because you know it'd be like land <laughs> And it make a little like alone. Just I mean, like well, she's never alone. Why don't they just call her Dansley or something? Yeah. I don't know. How about how about Denalyard? Denalyard. It's Dryland. Yeah. Denalyard. Denalyard. Yeah, I like that. Why Why don't they just call her? Why don't they just call her Turd? <laughs> Why don't they call her annoying why, little fucking girl? Why they call humming? her Turd? Well, it's an anagram for dirt. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Good. My name backwards is Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. You're blocking our no. sponsor. <laughs> okay, for real. Her name should have been Turd. Because she's a fucking turd. turd. Do we do we like her in this movie? Do no. we like I mean, do we like no. Napoleon Dynamite uh girl in this movie? <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, we, we don't <laughs> like her? I know. I Okay, okay. Well, I don't mind I don't the like way her. he smacks her around. I don't mind it at all. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Sometimes Whoa. you just gotta give him a little. I'm not talking about Helen. Like, I got. I, no, I hate that. that Don't worry. That, but she, got, the girl, kind of deserved it. I, mean, I got no problem smacking him across the head. It's like, <laughs> oh no, we don't, we don't abuse children here. Oh, okay, so just verbal abuse. <laughs> <or>? <laughs> Well, let's move on to the next scene. So scene three, a smoker airplane spots them and they fight back, crashing the plane but causing damage to their boat. After that, they meet another drifter who's killed by the mariner after a trade. They also come across a trap by the smokers and feast on a large sea creature. Speaking of which, Jack Black. Yeah. Great little cameo. Never never in a million years would have figured that out. He had a lot more camera time. Did he really? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. It's even hard to go back to this. So, so Jack Black plays the the f- pilot of the airplane, mm-hmm. right? And even going back, knowing that, you're kind of like, is that him? Mm-hmm. He just he's just kind of a chameleon in there. He is. Uh, like I I think it's 
it's great. You do get a little Jack Black freak out because he's like, they killed Earl. <laughs> and, just, and they're like consoling him with cigarettes. So it's pretty funny. But yeah. <laughs> But it's it's a great little cameo. I wish we got a little bit more of him uh, yeah. in, in the regular cut right. of it. But, yeah, I mean, it's whatever. It's like Dave Chappelle being in, in uh, Con Air. Yeah. Like yes. it's, it's nice, you know. Uh, but, yeah, like Con- Dave Chappelle had a little bit more screen time, and I wish Jack Black did too. Um, I, will, I will say or ask you guys, like, how are they getting these cigarettes? Deacon is is chain smoking the entire movie mm. and ed- also like teasing that he's going to blow up his own ship. Like he's, he like tosses the match and someone's got to catch it. But then later that's exactly what happens. I'm like, well, are you crazy? Foreshadowing. Oh, wait, he is. He is crazy. Oh. Turns out. I forgot. But, um, speaking of, uh, YouTube, uh, channels that go deep into this movie, there is a channel out there. Forget what it's called, but this guy calculates and figures out how they would have gotten all of these cigarettes for how many years they've been on this boat, which is about 500, or like, you know, they could spend 500 yeah, years yeah. since this happened, and how many cigarettes they would need and how much it would fill up the boat. He's done this. There's people out there doing this, and I love that. And I yeah. love that. Yeah. I, but also, doesn't like, doesn't, does tobacco like go bad? Like, is there an expiration date on a part on a carton of cigarettes? So, this that's is, why, is that why people like my parents' friends used to have them in the freezer? That's what my dad does, right? Like, because it's <laughs> it preserves them, right? Okay, well, so that's the thing, right? Because, well, the co- frozen cold air should be drier or whatnot, it should be dry enough in there. It should, yes, be. but that's the thing. Like, you would think about this cigarettes should be like. A top dollar currency. They should in this world. It's like a prison. It's literally tobacco wrapped in paper. Paper. <gasps> paper. Paper. Have you ever seen it? Like, so, so much paper. <laughs> like, I, I don't oh, know. Rousing, man. You gotta be rousing. Because are, are, are they called the smokers for any other reason other than but, they, they see, all I, pretty much? No. Dude, no. I always thought they were called smokers because all of their machinery like smokes. Okay. And that that's what when I was younger. That's why I thought they were called smokers. But and maybe they are. But also they they're smokers. And if, yeah. if that's he true, he also says that they that he hates sails. He hates sails when he's trying when the sailboats his, yeah. his boats trying to escape. He's like he hates sails. He only uh, wants stuff that's powered. This is so dumb. I like and I don't this know. Is so if, <laughs> this is so if dumb. That, if that's the case, like, and that's the only reason why they're called smokers, is it like a? Uh, uh, PSA that smoking is bad and anyone who does it is a one-eyed maniac. I hope not, because that's just even... I don't even like that. <laughs> I, mean, I even hate that worse. There's really no inkling of that, but if that's it, I, I'm i not into it. It's about powered machines. It is about those smoking things, right? That they are smokers. I think it all just coincides. Because every time you see them on the horizon, you see the smoke yes. around them, right? But and what so, are they doing? Okay, so maybe they talk about this in the fucking. You're gonna say yes anyway because I'm never gonna watch it. But. Yeah, he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so the the D's is full of oil, correct? Yeah. How uh, jet skis don't run on oil, so like what what have they converted the engines to run on oil, or do they somehow are they making gasoline? Right. Do, you know what I'm saying? How like, are they processing Oil it? is not it's gasoline. It's not crude oil that no. these things run on. No. Yeah. Or maybe it is. That's why they're smoking. Like, they somehow adapted maybe. it. Maybe. I, I don't know. See, that's... And they don't really... I, I don't believe they address that in any no. regard of, like, that they're running on this, like, kind of crude oil. Because that's what it would have to be. Right. That's what the, the Exxon Valdez was, was <laughs> transporting all the time. Can we talk a little bit about that real quick? Like, that true story? And, like, sure. why... This movie had like a '90s in joke, you know, like it, yeah, because what the Exxon Valdez was a uh, oil tanker that what it, it what year was that it it crashed it crashed something and spilled spilled tons and tons of oil into the ocean yeah. wasn't that what it was yeah a lot and it like changed the, the environment of wherever it did so what's yeah what's the point I, right I, it seems just like uh, a, 1989 sorry okay it seems just like a little in joke that like oh well that's a uh, a, a recent reference that we can make and then it's just like oh okay but it dates it so much completely it really does if, if you were to let uh and it's not even like pop culture anymore it's not, right so it's like not. if i didn't if, know about it if you showed a, a 16 year old kid kid this they'd be like 
Okay. I, don't get, I don't get the joke. Yeah, what's what's the D's? Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't. D's nuts. D's nuts. That's, <laughs> that's what, what it'd be like. That's what they would do. They'd be like, I know that more than I know the Exxon. <laughs> and Valdez. they would probably be like laughing every time they said, "Let's get back to the D's." And then no one's like, "What's D's the what? D's?" D's nuts. Ah! Ah, got it. <laughs> See, I would have liked this movie better if he would have done that. Yeah, Deacon. They, Deacon doesn't get enough credit for being a funny guy. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. He uh, he taught. They do. They have that little scene at whatnot where it's like they call it Saint Joe. Yep. It's Joe Hazelwood. Joseph Hazelwood yeah. is the captain or whatever. Whatever. Cool. Neat. Yeah. I I didn't know it until I looked it up. I didn't either. Yeah. I, I watched three YouTube videos on it. Yeah. It's <laughs> like I I had to look it up to actually get the joke. This is where I had a moment though. Um, we we have a we have a illegal watching platform that we can sometimes watch movies on. I don't I don't know whatever. I'm not gonna say what it no, is, but don't. but me and Sean were sharing it, and I was like, Sean was currently watching it, so I got into it, and I was like, I was like, oh Sean, are you at the 50 minute mark? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I won't I won't hit play. But as I'm looking at it, I haven't started the movie yet. I'm realizing that you're 50 minutes in, and there's still 90 minutes left, <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> No, no. I no. like when when you look at it from that perspective. Instead of saying two hour and fifteen minutes, okay. But if you're like, oh, I'm almost. I've already watched almost an hour. A regular they, movie is over by now. <laughs> yes, that was when I I kind of already got a bad vibe in my mom. I yeah. Like, well, oh and my then God. I, I first looked this up just to see where I could find it uh, to purchase, and uh, <laughs> I I saw that like when you look it up on Google, it says the three hour cut. Like that says three, three and a half hours, three, it's like three two hours. hours and 54 minutes yeah. or something. And I'm like, oh no, I don't have time. I yeah. can't do this. It's honestly, I can't like it's I any I, movie. I stayed up way too late watching it. I'm glad you I, did. You're helping. Did. You're helping us so. out with all this information here. Can you then explain to me <laughs> per the Ulysses gut per what the fuck is this fish? This sea creature? Yeah. Thing? They, they, I don't. That's the one thing I actually don't remember. I don't remember seeing don't this either. scene at all, and it really? happened, and it it just blew me away. I was like, "What's he doing in the water? Oh my god! Wait, what? What happens here? Like, so there's a there's a giant sea creature that we've never once been told about, yeah. never hear about again, that comes out of the water that he purposely gets eaten by, to then somehow kill from the inside, to then take." To the boat and eat. No, there's a lot of these creatures. There's a lot of these. This isn't just like one monster thing. It's like it's a lot of these creatures. Can I guess maybe what it is? Is that these like um, creatures that we don't even know yet? Like Probably. we don't haven't explored the underwater. We all know about the water now because of Ocean Gate. Um, it's <laughs> is it like a those creatures are are now coming up out and, and yeah. Above. I mean, I think he knows about them because he spends so much time in the water, mm. right? That's again the only the only real explanation is is leading up to this after the after the thing with uh, Kim Coates. You know, yeah. yep. and, and which I love. His character is amazing. It is. Let's be honest. He might he, be one of the my the best performances. In the he, movie. He, like it a lot. he does this super well. And I love it because he plays against Kevin Costner's character very well. Just very eccentric where he's very stoic. And they're, they're and buddies, they're, too, real quick. They, they, they are became they? great friends. They, yeah, he has him in uh, Open Range, uh, uh, Kevin Costner's directed Western. I cool. fucking love that cool. movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, does he ride a motorcycle? It does not. It, it's a Western. Yeah, well. But it, it gives more context about of how, how hungry they are. Number one, how hungry okay. they are, and what they'll do. He, yeah, yeah. Like he Trading. has like the tomato. He eat when he eats like the last tomato. They show that and how hungry they actually are, and why he throws that pole. It's like you're never gonna catch anything with this stupid thing. Right. You won't catch something with this little pill uh, pole out this far, like for, from these atolls or whatever. Okay. Okay. He's like, so so. There's no point to it, and he's like, fine, I'll catch you something. And that's really what it comes to be. So is them after they've been pestering him for food for so long. I will say this, though. For whatever reason, don't ask me why, when he slaps that big piece of fish meat on there, I'm like, I want that. I'm with you. I want that right now. I'm with you, man. Just on the is hot that your prop? coals, the fish food. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever picked food no. yet for a prop. No, I have a prop that actually I'm going to... I'm gonna, I'm okay, gonna take. Gonna say, okay. uh, from going? the, it'll be from the Ulysses. Cut. Okay, we'll wait. We'll, we'll <laughs> wait then. <laughs> <laughs> be so fucking proud of yourself. Fucking a, I am. I made it through the damn thing. I'm fucking proud of myself. <laughs> I'm taking from the Ulysses kid, actually, because <laughs> it's another great little snippet that I'll, that will explain. Okay, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about why, like, she offers herself, her body twice in this movie. Yep. 
Um, and then the, the second time he like literally just kind of sells her, which is why I want to punch him. It's kind of just like, what? I know, like I get like we're, it's savage land and these yes. are pirates and this is kind of maybe the way it is, but it's just like, I don't know if I needed that. You could come up with any, anything else. And I, I still would have th- thought Kim Coates was a piece of shit. If that, that's the only motivation. Yeah. Yeah. There, you still would have assumed already that Kim Coates is crazy. He's yeah. lost his mind. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to get out of this or I was tr- really trying to get was uh, because of the paper that he found on him. Because I feel like I feel like once he found out he had the paper, then he could read it and he could again. He's making, you know, he has a lot of this stuff already. So it's like he's piecing more things together because that paper's valuable information potentially. Mm-hmm. That was the only thing is that he could if he could get it in his hands long enough. But I don't know. But they don't even do that. I mean, they, they, there's they, no I don't redemption think to be to like, that. oh, it was my grand plan. I wasn't yeah. going to let him. Correct. I wasn't going to let him have you. Like I just needed a quick second, and then yeah. I was going to kill this guy. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was I was kind of hoping that he like was going through those papers and he was like, oh yeah, receipts, receipts, and then yeah. Arthur Digby Sellers homework. <laughs> Arthur Digby Sellers. <laughs> the hell is, is this, this your is this your homework? Is this your homework? <laughs> is this your homework, Larry? <laughs> been fucking awesome. Is this your homework, Larry? <laughs> what do we What do we think about uh, Helen, uh, the actress that played Helen? Like, I, I remember, I remember when I was younger, I was just like, who what, Who cares about this lady? But I, I feel like I like her more now in this modern day viewing. I like, like I feel, I feel her character. Her character's plight more than any other character in this movie. Like, uh, maybe she's maybe the most. Like Ke- Ke- the Mariner has zero. N- there's nothing to him. Uh, s- t- smokers. There's nothing to them. Like this, uh, Helen at least seems to have some like plan in her life that she's working towards. Yeah. Everybody else is like, yeah, whatever. She has the most human motivation, which is yes. like she's basically that that child's mom. Now, yeah. You know, and I I like that. Like we say in Aliens, you know, uh, I love that kind of character bit for characters. It's a it's a great motivation, and I like her a lot. Um, her performance in it and like again he's being a piece of shit to her he's like don't fucking touch anything she took out that <laughs> airplane guy with a fucking harpoon yeah it's kind of a badass it's, that's you need her yeah you need her to fight she just you. went ripley sarah connor on that exactly shit. like yeah and let's just say it's been a while since your mutated fucking ass has been around a woman like she's not bad to look at yeah why not? Maybe maybe she's gonna hang around. Maybe maybe tidy this fucking boat up a little. Yeah. Bit. You know, like provide you some company. Maybe yeah. maybe do you a favor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, not, no, that's not what I. That's not what I meant. Just help out around the place, yeah, right? Okay. Watch your back. I hear you, man. That's right. That's all. Oh, that's uh, that was a uh, that was a little funny like joke. Kim Coates joke for some reason. He's like, which one is the cook? Because I usually fall for the waitress. <laughs> 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 which which like, is also like, how like, do you know like, what a waitress is? Exactly. <laughs> how do you even know what that is? Well, okay. There's there's several like faux pas of this, right? Of like like they, yeah. Why do you know what the waitress is? And maybe it's just like a passed down joke. But then he also <laughs> says at one point he does say to um, Helen, he's like right before or right after he she kind of offers herself up to him. Says he says to her. A few minutes ago, I was potential dirt to you people. It's like so very valuable <laughs> <laughs> or very not valuable. What are we going with here? What route are we taking? Oh, I'm so confused. I'm very confused. It's a little more on her, like when she drops her robe yeah. or whatever. She had uh, well, she, she had done nude scenes before, but she refused to do it on this movie for some reason, um, which whatever. Uh, but uh, she had like auditions for her body doubles because she wanted it to be right, like to her body. Yeah, that's so what she, my ass looks like. <laughs> she had three. Yeah, that's my. Bu- ass. Like, that's basically AJ doing the Ulysses cut on us right now, being like, yeah. "Oh yeah, yeah." I'm not going to show you what my ass looks like, but that's what it looks <laughs> she like. She had three. <laughs> she had three no, models it. come into her trailer and just like literally drop trial and show them show her mm. their ass, and she's like, mm, "Yep, yep, no," and they were all like giggling and shit. And but I just thought it was kind of fun, yeah. like. Whatever. Nah, perfect. <laughs> and like, just go ahead and add to the toll. I'm sure now we got to yeah. pay this like person. We had to pick our own body double asses. Mine would be like, oh, not hairy enough. Uh, <laughs> definitely not pruny enough. Cost. Ooh, there's no dimples in that yeah. one. Yeah. How much does your ass cost? 10K a cheek. Yeah. Mm. Well, can we afford that? Can we afford that? Oh, yeah. At this point, yeah, whatever. Kevin just gave us another 22 mil. <laughs> Which one? Which Kevin? <laughs> All right, let's move on to scene four. So the Mariner takes Helen below water to prove that dry land doesn't exist. When they surface, the smokers have taken over the boat. They take Enola and destroy his boat, leaving them to die. She can't swim. 
The and, little girl. And this is Waterworld. <laughs> yeah, duh. I, I'd actually be more convinced if she was like, you know, I don't know how to walk, right? You have to carry me everywhere. I, right. actually, I don't <laughs> right. know how to walk. Yeah. Right? She can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> Say it one more time. And this is water world. <laughs> where, where, wait, the whole world is water. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I just don't like getting in the water. Ugh, I don't have my floaties. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if my tattoo is going to wash off. Oh, I, oh, I just got it. Actually, isn't it weird that everybody's dirty? It is in, in a in a world made of water. In a world, yeah. Every like no one decides to actually get in the water to maybe just be like, hmm, ah, just gonna rinse off a little yes, bit. Yeah. Just oh, just clean my Ooh. clean the soot off of my face. They should all be like pristine because it's salt water. Yes. Yeah. Like they should be exfoliating like exfoliating your skin, perfectly dude. Exfoliated tan like goddess and gods. And like, no one is. Not a person there is. It's I know like, they had a like a, t- a spray tanner guy like after before every uh, shot they'd be like <sighs> spray everyone down with spray tan. It's just like it doesn't, like I say, why you don't have to be that way. You could literally, like you just said, you they'd all be like super clean. All their clothes should be perfect. And think about you, you're <laughs> not getting you're not getting sand all over you no. like when you go to the ocean, like to the beach. Yeah, none of that sand shit. The only people who clean. should be dirty is like the smokers because they live in that like yeah. oil rig. Yeah, but then they can be like, hey, we're gonna go swimming. Today. Oh, hey, we're gonna. It's go. my day off. We're going swimming. <laughs> hey, let's. Uh, Today off Everyone with. knows that the weird sea mutated creatures don't come out at this time of day. Right. No, Everyone they're knows asleep this. now. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yeah>. what? <laughs> what? They sleep? <laughs> I like when he's training her to, to uh swim, I was it, it just brought me to Terminator 2, which is like watching John or <laughs> watching Mariner with the machine. Watching Mariner. It was suddenly so clear the Terminator watching would never stop. Noah they would the never Mariner. leave him or say it was too busy to be there. <laughs> it would die for him. It would die for him. It was like exactly that scene. Yep, Basically slow motion, that. yeah, everything. Uh, I, this is a point where I would want to give a little bit of credit, though, to um, the score of it because I do really actually like this, that a, a lot of the score, especially in this scene and too the night, the nighttime shots. <laughs> <laughs> too ethnic for me. It like it was. It's really really good. It sounds very like heartfelt. It's very thoughtful music yeah. in these in these moments, especially at, like I say at nighttime. And these moments that are in the water, uh, where they're in the water together, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I really do have to. Get, who is the who is the composer? James again? Newton Howard. Newton, yes. And so I got to give him a lot of credit on this. He, I think he got when he got brought in. He even reached out to like, um, uh, what was his name? John, John Williams. Hans Zimmer. Uh, Hans Zimmer too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and he, I think he got like kind of his like B roll. All, all of his uh, vault stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Gave him some prompts. S- sample sample works and things like that. So he could work well off of mm-hmm. it. Yeah, so, he was brought in super late. Yeah. Let's talk about a couple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you look like you were going, and I have to say something. Hold on. <laughs> the, the Ulysses cut. Open it up. <laughs> Open Ulysses. No, there's a couple there's a couple <laughs> things we do we do have to talk about here. Um you know, they're, they're implying that all the ice on Earth, the ice caps, the glaciers have all melted, yeah. which is what has caused this. And there are people that have done the math, scientific people, that have said that if all of the ice on Earth melted, we'd get maybe like a 200-foot rise in sea level, which, which is catastrophic yeah. for the world. I mean, like, all your coastlines are gone. I mean, it's terrible. But in no way, shape, or form does that even come close to covering the earth. I mean, fucking, we're in Iowa. We're at 600 feet. We're not underwater, you mm-hmm. know, and we're only 600 feet above sea level. So that is a weird thing. The other thing that bothered me well, a lot... Well, the rivers, Mike. The rivers. Think about the rivers. <laughs> I have thought Sorry, about the rivers. Sorry, somebody's going somebody's gonna to say that. Sorry. I, said that. I, I, have, I have heard <laughs> some theories, too, that apparently, like, uh, uh, asteroids have hit the Earth, and they were made made of ice or I don't know, whatever. It okay. doesn't even fucking matter at this it point. It doesn't. It sounds like a great movie, but we didn't go in that direction. We <laughs> but then the other thing that really bothers me on this rewatch is that you know it was it was it's basically said that dry land is Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. It, we don't see it in our version that we watch, but there's like a plaque, I and guess, the in the Ulysses, Ulysses cut. cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ulysses cut. <laughs> so so dry land is Mount Everest, well. which is which is twenty nine thousand feet above sea level, the highest yeah. point on Earth, right? So let's say let's say that there's a thousand of that that's out of the water. So let's call it twenty eight thousand feet. The city that they dive to is Denver, Colorado, which is 5,000 feet above sea level. That means we've got 23,000 feet (laughs) 
for him to tr- take her down from the sea level to Denver. 23,000 feet underwater, which is yeah. way deeper than the fucking Ocean Gate was. Titan, yeah. The, way deeper than the Titan. Uh, the I guess, he yes, he can breathe underwater, but I guess pressure, he's immune to like pressure of the I, ocean. I guess. Um, uh, that little fucking, you know, titanium of a submarine <clears throat> can't withstand that, but this little paper bell thing <laughs> can totally bubble. withstand <laughs> the pressure. That, that was like one thing that just kind of bugged me. It's like you couldn't have... You couldn't have just thought about this just a little harder. And just also, a little bit more. Roger brought it up earlier, whereas he, they're down there, and yeah, they're actively being chased by the smokers. It's not like they've left. Dude, they just got away. They just got away, and yeah. they haven't gone far. They haven't gone anywhere. Well, if you're looking out in the ocean, you, you, you're not going to, you know, if you see an obstruction of the water, that's something else. You know what I mean? How deep did uh, Ocean Gate go? Like eight thousand feet? Like three mile, three three miles, I think. Okay, so let's call it twelve thousand feet. It took them eight hours to go down twelve thousand feet. We're gonna go. We're gonna be sixteen hours down, <laughs> just to be like, look, you fucking idiot! I told you. <laughs> See, let's go. You know, now you're wondering why I got point. these ski boots, right? It's because I've been going to the ski. I've been going to Breckenridge. I've been going to Breckenridge, <laughs> finding now, my way. Now you know. See, that's why they ate a bunch of fish beforehand. So he's like, as he's as he's going down, he's just like, you <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <He> do. <laughs> oh, good, she can't smell underwater, <laughs> but I can because I have gills. He's farting, and his bubbles are going up into the bell, and then she's farting, and it's <laughs> it's, it's real bad for her. Ah, uh, uh, uh. but, but it is a weird juxtaposition though, because uh, like I did love, I did love. This was like my favorite scene of the movie as a kid, like, where they oh, dive. Like, Holy shit, the world's underwater. And in fact, have you ever seen the music video uh, for the Pyramid Song by Radiohead? Mm-mm. Uh, it's from Kid A, I believe it was. Th- it's this. It's like this animation of a guy like goes underwater and swims through a town that is now the world's underwater. Hmm. And and it like it, it that video affected me in a weird way. It's like, oh man, but then this like Affects me in zero way. I'm just yeah. like, yeah, whatever. Oh well. well and then was I, I don't think, know if it was right before. Sorry, go ahead. I, well, I was just gonna say. I think I think it's because I don't know. There's just something about it that seems a little too. You know, you're you're going down in bet- into the like these buildings and stuff. If I saw that underwater, I would not go there. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, like, Isn't I, that probably where those weird mutated creatures? I live? think I have that. Like they call it like thassophobia or something. The thalassophobia, yeah. where. <clears throat> I don't want to go down into like and have big th- be next to big things like that submarine is there, no. like all that stuff. And you're like, I don't want to be a part of that. But I do really think that this is a it's a cool scene, and I think it's cool the way they put the shots together. But in the end, I don't think it, I think this is part of it that might not hold up uh, today. I think it's before this, like when they're when they're running from the smokers. Yes. Um, how long were the jet ski guys down there waiting for them? <laughs> like they they were holding them they're down like, there. They're like, they no, just, they're they're go- they're coming any minute now. They I just promise have, you. They just have straws. <laughs> they <laughs> did. They seriously did. They had this weird little thing they coming did, out of their mouth they? that was up onto the top Are of the you water. Serious? They're yes. literally doing fuck like like cartoon <laughs> Looney Tune style. Uh, Bill, hiding. Steve, Tom, we're gonna need you guys to take the next four hour session. You go down there. You're down there for four <laughs> hours. If they come, you'll hear the noise. If they don't, we'll do the other noise. That means come up. We're going to switch your shift with Travis, Travis, and Travis. Travis, Travis, Travis. <laughs> Travis, get out there. Uh, what were they tied to? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what Is this like the, Spider-Man's web, the and, opposite way? They just, it could, it's not anything? It could be interesting to be like, well, they have vagina ear gills, too. Like maybe they're oh. they're mutants and that's so why they could be maybe down there? some of the smokers are mutants. Who knows? I don't know. Knows? know. <laughs> I like no Ulysses cut action on that or uh, well well so for in the Ulysses <laughs> cut in the Ulysses cut no there's nothing on that like I I um, there's just some of the stuff that it looks really good like this little outpost thing mm-hmm. but then there's a point where you're like it doesn't make sense though because. How is that thing standing up in the water? Is it really built all the way down? No. It can't be. Like that's the kind of stuff to me that's like and it's it's just it's not practical at all. Of yeah, like who's living on that how thing? How do you get up the thing? <laughs> like are you t- you're carrying supplies up there on a ladder? It doesn't make any sense, guys. <laughs> we we figured that are out. Are you saying it doesn't make any sense? 
It doesn't make any sense, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> Ulysses, God. Well, let's get to the final scene then. So Gregor rescues them in a balloon and takes them to his new camp. They find the smoker's ship and attack, saving Enola and sinking the ship. Sometime later, they come across dry land. The group stays while the mariner heads back to sea. Maybe you don't have time to, to sit there and boof. No, you got time. You got time. You're going to make time and not go get the, the map girl. You're gonna, you're how, are you gonna, how are you going to go get her? Your ship's busted. So okay, so you're they're, you're just kind of like realizing facts are facts, and we're stuck here. I think, well I think they think they're might as well die. fuck our way to death. Okay, I got that. Yeah. I like they're, that. Like, they're like they're like we're gonna fuck until we die. I like yeah. that a lot. Actually, and he's like I don't know what that means. Actually, I but. want that move. <laughs> I do like uh, I, I, Waterworld. Huh? <laughs> Waterworld, fuck until you die. Ah. <laughs> Two. Ah. <laughs> they survived the first one. <laughs> uh, I did really like. There's a, there's a couple of moments where they talk about. Um, uh, getting like other supplies and stuff, and I think it was like during the fish and whatnot uh, that uh, he's like, "It's gonna rain tonight, so you can drink all the water you want. So we'll just capture all this other water and stuff." There's other little points to that, but the fact that they're just like on that ship, I mean, he could paddle something, right? You gonna paddle around? Where? <clears throat> Come on. Well, and that's that's the the grand scale. The oceans now, the way they are, are absolutely vast and enormous you can only see like three miles to the horizon i think we covered that in con air funny enough uh <laughs> just think about now the entire world is water like you you your chances of getting anywhere that you want to and finding anything you want is so slim to none but yet gregor's like oh ha, i found you oh, I mean, you. like literally at the perfect moment i found you in my balloon good idea lighting the boat on fire <laughs> <laughs> That was a good idea. Hey, you know, I saw the smoke, you. but I was like, that's probably that's not probably the smokers. Not smokers. <laughs> well, I saw you. I saw you five minutes before this, but you guys were well, you were busy. Yeah. You were pretty busy. Been I've been here the, the whole, whole time. time. He's like <laughs> he accidentally dropped something. He's like, oh God. He's mid thrust. <laughs> he gets startled by what something Gregor dropped in a screwdriver. Yeah. It's like <laughs> so you guys can't find a giant mountain sticking out of the water, but we can see this little broken ship of two people yeah. boofing. Like, yeah. the fire, you know? keep, keep that in mind, too, of like when they get back to this little encampment thing. Yep. And, uh, uh, th th That'd be terrifying too. You just that all you, all you guys, all those survivors can do is just tie their boats together in the middle of an ocean <laughs> yeah. at nighttime. <laughs> That's terrifying. That would terrify the crap out of me. I was hoping that this his his actor is Artie Call. Artie like, Call, yeah, the enforcer. Or enforcer. Whatnot. I was hoping he'd have a bigger role. Is that in the uh, Ulysses cut? You get more. You get more out of him. Like he is a neutral party. Um, he is. He actually he's making a case not to kill Mariner. Um, the, which guy? The the one like the the head of the old atoll yeah. guy. Yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. he's like you know who I am. He like was, that kind of thing. He was gonna be my punchable face because of the way he he walked in and wouldn't look at him. Was like you know who I am, right? Yeah. And he wouldn't look at him. I was like, <laughs> and that's like nah, I kind of like him. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's nice, kind of nice guy. He's kind of a nice guy. guy. <laughs> he redeems himself. <laughs> um, but he he does. He kind of sticks up for him all in, in that scenario. That's cool. I like that. But you actually get a point where. I don't I don't know if you see this. I can't remember if you see this or not. But he goes back he goes to it and then he leaves and then he comes back. And like it never explains why they have some of the um like smokers uh jet skis and stuff. Hmm. You know? Maybe they got them from the thing or after the They took a couple of yeah. them or something. Yeah. But they actually get those because the mariner comes back oh, I see. after a couple of smokers found them at night. And he takes them out. Then that's that's how they get those jet skis. Mm. So I don't know. It's just like little things. It's like I guess we can just make it up as we go and yeah. Yeah. make it up for ourselves. Oh, they just got them from the atoll battle. The first thing I hope they do when they do get to dry land is that they set up a they school. Oh, well, sorry. then they set up a school for Enola because Enola, you know, I mean, she's she's doing okay, but she needs to learn. Um, you know, she says that line to uh, to our boy uh, Deacon. She says he doesn't have a name. That means he can't die. I was like. Oh. Well, no, who told you that? Was that? Does that make any sense? No, that's not actually how that works. Because like you can still die. You don't. You, oh, because he doesn't. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll get a school made up for you on dry land. Don't we're worry. gonna we'll, make we'll work. A, we're gonna make a school because you're an idiot. <laughs> um, I just yeah. listen, turd. You're drawing. You know how to suck. listen? Here you go. 
You know how to listen, turd? All right, turd. Here we go. This is how it goes, okay? Um, <laughs> and why does she? Why is she like in love with the Mariner? He's been a nothing but a piece of shit. Taught her to swim, bro. <laughs> That's all it takes. Ta- taught her That's to all swim. it takes. <laughs> Thanks Teach for teaching me to swim. <laughs> you can lead a you can lead a horse to water, but yeah, they uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> like she is explaining what like a massive hero he is while he's just killing tens of thousands of people. Yes, like it's like intercut. It's like a montage. Like he's the best. Taught me how to swim. It was the best day of my life. <laughs> Got us a ton of food, just saving lives left and right, just <laughs> murdering me. <laughs> I, and, like, and this was pretty anticlimactic to me. This, this, like, I liked. We talked about it. The best action scene in the movie was that first one in the atoll. Yeah, this was sort of like bleh, this whole thing. It, maybe am I am I thinking about that wrong? This final attack on the D's. It, it to me wraps up pretty smoothly like this this whole thing is like oh this was their big like oil tanker thing that they got from the exxon thing and that's that's like their layer and they paddle it they literally paddle it with giant paddles (laughs) um because it was just it was there wasn't any setup to this either and then like once they were once he got there i figured we we're gonna have a little more, but they're like, no, he's just murking people up he's until good. he gets yeah. there. You know, they basically yeah, he, felt he a little rushed. Goes splinter cell on these dudes, yeah. and just like kind of just murking people. And I really wish that they would have had a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a standoff, I guess. You know, but he's destroyed the boat at this point, um, and he just needs to save Enola. And it's like you think he'd maybe take a better course of action than blowing the whole thing up <laughs> or trying to take the plane that she's in down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, are we sure he's not trying to kill her? <laughs> I don't know. He is, he's going full blown like me and Helen. It's just me and Helen from here on out. There is no more of you. That's the thing is like at no point there's actually, it's even in the other, in the long cut, it's showing like when he's going to that outpost, they they reveal that he was actually going there to trade them those two for resin. Yes. So he was going to actually. Um, at no point was he really committed to having them along for the the long haul. Mm. So again, th- it's just the motivation behind what he's doing. He's kind of keeping them at bay so he can get them somewhere to basically trade them for for resin, so he mm. can keep going. But then he got a piece of the. And then he got a piece got of a that piece that Helen of Troy. <laughs> And he's <laughs> like, he's like, I've, I've been going about this all wrong. He's just, man. Yep. Uh, I do want to be a daddy. He's like, <laughs> you know what? I don't want to. Yeah, I want to be your dad. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Somebody called me daddy, and I like that. I did. And You're both <laughs> calling me daddy in two different ways, but I, I do like him. I do appreciate. You know, I like it. And so, but he's like, I'm. He's okay with Enola being like, <laughs> like, uh, 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 what would what do you call it? collateral damage? Yeah, he's okay. I'm convinced. We're gonna try our best. He's fine with her being collateral damage. Yeah. He's like, I'll try to get her, but you know. But then, but then that then that's totally the opposite. Then when he decides, he decides that he's going to take a line, not a bungee cord, a line, which in the ocean you call them lines, not ropes, which has zero stretch to it, and he's going to <laughs> jump off of a <laughs> balloon, assuming the line is the exact length it needs to be to get to the water. Before his leg completely comes out of his socket and breaks because he thought it was a bungee cord. What? That was a bungee cord. Come on. It was not a bungee cord. <laughs> what bungee. the f- Who the fuck has a bungee cord you in Waterworld? You need a bungee cord in order to air balloon. That's all. That's the no. only thing I've ever heard in my no. life. No. This, this, I could live with the majority of this movie, but when this happened, I was like. It doesn't make any sense, but I do like the idea of it. Like, but. And then also it doesn't make sense for like what are they gonna like what, what are they, they going to do when they get there? <laughs> are they just gonna smash her? All they wanted was kamikazes to go in and kill they, her. They were obviously because when jet skis hit each other, they don't normally explode in balls of fire. So these were loaded with with oil, bombs oil, and yeah. oil, Gasoline, and the whole oil. idea was that these were three kamikaze jet skis that were gonna kamikaze together to blow themselves up plus Enola. Kamikazes. Kamikaskis. They're gonna blow turd out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> They're just. I do like like it's a cool like that'll stick with me. Like Roger says, some some stuff will stick with him. Yeah, I like that conceit, the idea a lot. But obviously, it probably wouldn't work. What if uh, you know? Let's say that's a hundred foot fall. Let's say it is a bungee cord. Let's just say that. <laughs> let's say it's a hundred feet. What if? What if the What if the 
thing's 150 foot long. <laughs> he literally is just going to kill her. <laughs> it just goes straight in the just water. Literally head to head. Bonk <laughs> each other into death. And then as he comes back out, the jet skis are going to explode on I like that ending. They explode. <laughs> then he comes up. He's he's dead. There's only like one of his legs and his his lower torso or lo- lower part of his body is still on the thing. Still and that's what like, goes back <laughs> no, up no, and fl- flops back <laughs> into the <laughs> God. <laughs> and actually they didn't show it what happens let's say it again let's say it is a bungee cord he gets her you know that the laws of physics will not allow him to get all the way back up to a starting point right, right. so he's just going to keep going like this with her <laughs> uh, how did how did they eventually bring her up i wish that would have been like <laughs> they made it all the way four days to dry land with them just going come on it would have been like i wish that would have been the ending silhouette shot you see the the, the thing floating away but it's just them just going <laughs> Uh, across the base of the moon like that beautiful <laughs> shot earlier in the movie or they did like collide and explode both of them the the people up there like oh fuck our our, the, our hero's gone and our map is gone maybe the map is still intact maybe the map is still <laughs> gregory why don't you get down there. there and go look and see if that piece is there <laughs> can we talk about can Ugh. we talk about the map for a second before we finish this up because um the map just said if you go this way, then there's a big mountain here. Yeah. And the the, the center of that was just an arrow. Yeah. So just go one way or the other. Just go. <laughs> just go. You're <laughs> if we find go, it. if we go this, and so you're talking about coordinates. You have to find the coordinates from where you're at, right? Which they don't know. Which they they can't know that. Nope. Um, I think he said at one point, "Well, I've been mapping the cities down below." But yes. how how does that help? So that's the thing is like, oh, we know these coordinates. If we just go north or south, I bet we'll get there. What? Nope. Well, they didn't take in the fact that Earth is flat, too. Oh, that's right. So, oh, yeah. no. If Shit. they would have just thought about that. Yep. But now if, <laughs> if, on, then, if then yep. the, the big ice mountains that are, that are around the edge of the flat Earth mm-hmm. have all melted... Isn't all the water falling off the edge now? Well, no, because you, <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, it's a globe, though. You know? Well, so Are eventually, it's just all going to kind of drain out, and it'll be fine. Cool. Then go back to their Good. homes. Okay. If the Earth was flat, my cat would have pushed everything off by now. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> all right, a couple last things though. They do find dry land, dry land, and oh, yeah. uh, and the Mariner decides to leave, and and the other dude, who's the main dude that's left there now, the. Already call the yeah. enforcer. The enforcer is just like, dude, I get to repopulate the earth. He's like, check Helen. this shit out. This is fucking great, dude. <laughs> He's like, Gregor's not going to do it. <laughs> Gregor's not going to do it. And this fucking dumbass mariner is going back out to water. I, I, I hate this. I hate, <laughs> I hate the idea that he's like, but I belong at sea. It's like, no. This is the most beautiful piece of land I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Stability. Food, water, home, structure. This is great. But I also read apparently the original ending. Do you is this is this the Ulysses cut then where it yeah. says it's explained that he isn't leaving because he's freaked out over dry land. Right. Which is what they make it seem like. It's or that he truly belongs in the open waters. He reveals to Helen that there may be other mutants like himself out there and that he must find them, tell them about dry land and Helen, and bring them back hate it that's, that's i hate that worse than him being like but the ocean's calling me yeah it's it doesn't feel right if you notice if you do notice a little bit like as he's walking he is very unstable uh kind of like he he has a tough time walking on land did you feel that when you got off your cruise ship oh yeah yeah no i i I've, my, my head was like this the whole time just sitting down you know, yeah you know? And so, like that was his that was his thing, and then but they I have love this how they're implying the that, that Helen and Enola do not have this. Yeah, exactly. Of course they do. Of course they they've got to. They both those people would all step onto that land and be like, uh, uh <laughs> the the world is moving. It's not stable. <laughs> What's happening? And so, like like that's what they would be feeling. And but yes, the Ulysses cut that does have. Well, there's more mutants and there's people out there, and he wants to be the shepherd essentially that no, he doesn't shows them the everyone the way to drive. I gotta be honest, I do like that better than just like I'm gonna go back. (laughs) (laughs) But 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 look, the ocean calls to me. 
Uh, the ocean. Uh, uh, I belong on the water. Purple sunsets. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> purple sunsets. Oh, I man. don't know, boys. What I, do you think? I, I yeah, I I do. I will say they did find. I did see it where they go and they're basically doing the classic. <laughs> Goodbye, Mariner. But then they look down and they see the placket and it says like the Everest. when when and they saw like, Everest in eighteen eighty something yeah. or whatever and that's and they're like oh okay hmm. and it, we're gonna call it, it Mount Farts uh, <laughs> nope we're gonna call it Mount Turd <laughs> <laughs> for our savior and her back map Turd Mountain. <laughs> Don't go change it. Don't go change it. I, I will say to the audiences, we're probably wrapping this up right now. That uh, oh, we're going to release our Ulysses cut uh, in this in this episode's probably two hours long or something like that. It, the other cut will be three hours, just so you know. We're yep, talking, yep. We're talking oh, yeah, way sure. more about yep. it. So. Absolutely. Yep. Well, we have uh, dissected this with a modern eye. We've stripped away the nostalgia. It's time to give it a modern day rating. AJ. Come on, tell us what you thought about this. Modern day rating, man. It's going to be called the turd cut. Um, <laughs> Obviously. The turd, uh, the turd cutter. The turd cutter. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's what they call the short version. Uh, um, no, so modern day, I still, I still, honestly, I have a lot of fun watching this movie. Um, I had to, I had to watch this more than I really wanted to, especially because I, I really wanted to watch the Ulysses cut for this. Yep. Um, so I, I probably, I beat myself over the head with this movie, um, this week and, um, but I'm trying not to let that stretch, you know, strip anything away. The action sequences are great. You learn about the movie, like, and how much hate it got and during the production. I think that, I think that that feeds in a lot to it actually. Um, the set design is absolutely incredible. Like, I don't think the movie gets enough credit there for the set, the costume, like all that stuff. It's very, very intricate. And there's a lot of little things like most post-apocalyptic <clears throat> movies. If you take a, take the time to look at the detail and like level of intricacy in their, in their costuming and their, their sets, it's, it's usually amazing. And this is nothing short of that. So, um, I really enjoy it. I, I wish I could I wish I could get the happy medium cut between the Ulysses cut right, right. and uh, the original. We didn't do props, but I have one. Um, and uh, I wish I could have a two a two hour and thirty five minute cut of this movie, and it would be perfect. Just give me all the additional worldly context and content um, of this. That being said, guys, I am going to give the uh, original the two fifteen cut. Um, I'm going to give it a 7.2. 7.2. Give us your prop. Prop is uh, during the scene where uh, he gives back the crayon to Helen to <laughs> yep. give to Enola. He, Helen walks up, and he's got that little windmill thing that's sitting right next to him. That's actually powering a Walkman, an oh, old Walkman with okay. two little speakers, and he's got a Miles Davis CD sitting nice. right there. Nice. And I want that CD player with that in there. Hell yeah. Sean, go ahead. Mike um, hates that so <laughs> much. <laughs> Prop, I'm gonna. I want the the 30 cal turret with the crazy guy in it. You can't have uh, the guy in it. Okay, that's fine. I'll <laughs> take did, the turret. Yeah, you don't want. You can just, just have the, the thing. Turret. You can't have the action. I figure. want that. I just like my chair to watch these movies. Yeah, in. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and and this is your remote. <laughs> yeah. uh, pause real quick. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I dude. think I, I I think this movie is a blast. Um, I I. I wouldn't ever like choose to sit down and watch this movie, um, but when it's on, I I will say this: this is the perfect like. I just we drank so much Saturday night, and you wake up Sunday hungover, and you like make some eggs or like eat some cereal or something. And this movie is on TBS. Perfect fucking morning. Mm -hmm. I love this movie for that. Um, I I hate that this movie was like a, a pre preconceived notion of just like it's already gonna be bad before anybody watches it. It is not that bad at all. No. Um, but I will say like it like I said I don't think I will find myself returning to it much. Uh, the sets are amazing. I think the direction direction is amazing. Um, performances are are pretty fine. Uh, I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give this a straight six. Straight six for Sean. My uh, prop. I want a. I want a glass of Kevin Costner's hot piss. Hot piss. I feel like that's something I want to try in my life. 
Nice. I feel like it's probably worth a lot of money right now, too. I, I bet it is. To be like, look, Kevin Costner sniffed and then pissed in this. Yep. And like it's fucking great. It's still hot. Would you drink it? Would you drink it just out of like a like a low ball glass, like a whiskey glass? Kinda. I'd probably put it over. Would you put it over ice? Rocks? Yeah, yeah. Like like water over water. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You I'd would, do that. You would sip it too. Yes. Oh, yeah. it's a sipper. Yeah. yeah. It's it's aged well. It's yeah, a it's well. a sniffer. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh no, for me, this movie. I have zero emotions towards any character in this movie. Yeah. I feel nothing towards anyone. They they were unable to make me like root for anyone. And and that's a problem. Like I I the main character sucks in this movie. It's a terrible character, doesn't have a, a redemption arc. I really though appreciate them going for this. Like the set designs, the sailboat, they went for it and it's awesome and i really appreciate it and i cannot hate the idea of this movie i love the i just want more of like the backstory i want to know more about like how did this happen to the world and like i don't want to know what you guys do on a tolls i want to know like how did we get there so mm -hmm. it just didn't pay off for me i'm going to give it a 4.94 a little Dang. low here guys but executive producer josh miller says this is a weird movie i had to go searching for it it's not one of the 1,600 DVD Blu-rays that I own. Nice. I have a spreadsheet. Even if I did own it, I'm still living in a camper. Well, two campers, so all the movies are in storage. One day, I'll live in a house again. Someday, or sorry, somehow this movie isn't in my maybe you'd like categories of all the streaming apps I have. But I do have Peacock, so I can watch good old WrestleMania and Waterworld. <laughs> this movie, I can't say it's held up well or it hasn't. I guess this movie just exists to me. It's not a great movie, nor is it nor is it a bad movie. I felt like Hopper made this film better. I feel like that he was over the top and added humor. I loved his line when the pig dude was going ham. Hey, get it? Nice. Get it. Pig nice. With the fifty cows, Hopper asks, "What's that cousin's name?" Uh, or yeah, what's that cousin's Adios, name? Cousins. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't answer to Chuck. Call him Charles. Favorite line in the movie. Costner, on the other hand, has shown that he can add humor to his parts. Here, he just he took the role too seriously. I think the movie looked good. Set design was amazing or shitty, depending on your mood. The special effects were good for the time, and some held up and some didn't. I think if you shorten this movie by 30 minutes, it would be a be much better movie. It's pretty long for a really shallow plot. Nice. <laughs> Killing it. Yep. I won't get into the scientific inaccuracies, inaccuracies they are bound. Modern day score, I give it a 5.4. Just a tad lower than my nostalgic score. It's certainly not as bad as it's deemed. So... That takes us to a 5.89. Damn. For a modern day rating. Okay, let's see where that takes us. 5.89 is going to slide in at number 97 out of 117. That's Ooh. pretty low. What did I say? 5.89? Yeah. Uh, so that is just below Boondock Saints, just above Running Man, is how we feel about this movie. <sighs> Running, yeah. Running Man's better. Uh, you think Running so? Running Man's the greatest movie ever made. See, well, I, 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 <laughs> I think it's funny because you know uh, Josh said to make it a shorter movie, and I think I you know. Should, I think you should make it actually a little bit longer. I think you could be happy either way. I think you could make it the same length that it is now, but cut out some stupid shit and add more of the important stuff. Add more of that that yes. worldly context, and you know, do that. But yes, that's yep. that's super funny. Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. We appreciate you being here so much. Tune in next week. We are going to have a bonus Monday episode for you. Top five animated TV series. All right. That's followed what by. It, huh? Yeah, that's what we've, <laughs> okay. I mean, we had a big debate about that. We'll tell you about it later. Uh, also followed by Twister. Mm, I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. If you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. Top five movie soundtracks mm -hmm. was a fun Fun discovery, uh, nice little episode talking about our, our favorite uh, soundtracks from movies. So go check that out. And don't forget, we have a voicemail call us at 319-804-9596. Leave us some voicemail feedback like today's caller. Hey, you guys. Hey. This is Emily uh, from Arkansas. I just want to say I love your podcast. I listen to it in the gym while I'm cleaning my house. Basically everywhere, I totally binge all of your podcasts. After hearing you from Burt Kreischer, love it. I'm a big movie buff, so you guys are amazing. My favorite episode so far is probably the Harry Potter one. Nice. I will forever laugh at Tony's one entire. <laughs> Last for probably 10 minutes straight. <laughs> um, if I could make two requests. So one movie I would love to hear about is a movie that I watched so much as a kid. And as an adult, I thought it was a fever dream and then realized it was a real movie. 
Sergeant Bilko, <laughs> one of my favorite military movies ever, and oh. I would love to hear about it. A second request would be I would love to hear a short episode, like a special edition episode about favorite sequels to movies, like mm. Harry Potter, um, Harry Potter. Harry, Harry Potter. Any sequel. I, I, I have a feeling like, she had a call there. I was trying to tell you guys what sequels. Um, so I would love to hear about um, any favorite sequels that you guys recommend or that you don't recommend. I would love to hear about it. So, damn dang it, guys. Let's get to it. Have a good one. What joke did damn she say from Harry it. Potter? I didn't hear her. The t- t- Tony's wand and tire. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you, gotta go down, you gotta go to to Greg or, or, or Gregory's or whatever. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! See, we do have female uh, all fans. Avengers, yeah, that's yeah. a that's a fun episode idea. Favorite sequels? That'd be fun. I do like yeah. that idea a lot. That'd be a, a lot of fun. We will we will be doing that idea. We uh, will one hundred percent. So, guys. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for calling in uh, all the way down from Arkansas. Awesome to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Make sure you're joining along on social media with us. Find Confused Breakfast at Confused Breakfast anywhere on social media. Just search for Confused Breakfast. Check us out on YouTube as well, guys. Um, we love hanging out on YouTube. By all means, drop us a review, five stars if you can if you can manage it, and write us a review uh, on any platform that you can because we love reading them confusedbreakfast.com head there and grab some of our merch you can get some shirts you can get some koozies you can get some uh coffee cups you can buy individual cups of our piss wow that's kind of fun that's limited hot. limited oh very limited <laughs> that's hot wow yeah yeah uh, uh, confusedbreakfast.com as well as see our ratings of these movies uh individual and uh show collective goodbye i fucking love you patreon.com slash confused breakfast the best way to support us you get a ton of bonus content check us out there we are produced by upload media group in cedar rapids we have fucking craig at the controls by the way craig we cannot do this without you you're the fucking best thank you so much thank you for sitting here during this nonsense craig's the man and technically technically my neighbor and we've never like really (laughs) no we don't hang out outside of this so next time you call in you give craig a shout out yeah uploadmediagroup.com learn more there and we are on the cloud 10 iheart podcast network learn more there cloud 10.fm that's it there's no rules in water world Except Nothing's for, free in Waterworld. Yeah, that's it. There's no other rhyming. Bones to berries, veins just, to vines. Put your dick into my <laughs> thighs. <laughs> into my gill ears. Put it inside of my hat that doesn't work. In these.